And welcome to episode 109 of the Misanthropod. I am Snipe, and as always, I'm joined by Captain Wib. Say hello. Hello. And I'm also joined by Captain Drummermat. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm sorry, time. did I catch you on the come there? <laughs> Caught me on the yawn. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry, am I boring you already, sweetness? <laughs> Apparently, it was happening while you, were pa- while you were doing the intro, and I was panicking more and more as it got closer and closer, <laughs> but the yawn just kept going. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Hello. Fucking, I, I like how fantastic. I like how as we've gone on, we've got less good at doing a coherent intro to this podcast. Not my fault. Well, for the first, like, I'm going to say fifty or so episodes. If we cocked up this badly, we'd start again. But yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually a fair point. <laughs> what? It's like how um, it, it, earlier on in this intro, Snipe was doing a whole thing about captains because we were talking about <laughs> Captain Scarlet before it started. And normally, like we'd, or I'd make some effort to put context to that. <laughs> nah. Um, but like it almost got completely derailed by you yawning, like with like several <laughs> levels into like a cock up. At yeah, this Matt, point. could you try and be a little bit more professional, please? Seriously, oh, yawning. <sighs> every what if every time you yawn, a ghost puts their finger in your mouth? I'd yawn more often. Oh, with my, me too. With, with my butt. <laughs> <laughs> be an apt time for me to just start talking about what I've done and we move on from this. Yeah, I think so. We do seem Snipe slide and ask. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, whilst, whilst Snipe has a crisis over here, uh, I, I'll talk about some things that I've been up to. Please do. That really has broken you, hasn't it? Anyway, so, uh, to please the tabletop people in the crowd, I, I do have a minor amount of tabletop news to talk about. Nice. What have you been up to? Uh, so, I've been, I've been getting into laser burn. Ooh. Which is, uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. It hurts. <laughs> do you want to go out the room? No, I'm okay. So I've been getting into Laser Burn, which is a tabletop skirmish game that was made in 1980 uh, by Brian Ansell, who ran Games Workshop for a while, uh, currently runs War Games Foundry. Do you want... Okay. Seriously, do you want a second? <laughs> no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm not sure how well I can talk about things whilst you're having a crisis over here. <laughs> Blame Matt. He's the one who's gaping his ass at ghosts. Oh, ow. I'm good. Okay. So, yes, I, I've, I've been... Uh, and by getting into it, I mean, I've been reading a lot about it. And I've been, like, painting miniatures. Uh, <laughs> but I... Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, painting, <clears throat> painting miniatures, you say? Yes, I have been painting miniatures. Um, so yeah, uh, the next episode of Codex Compliant is going to be on Laser Burn, in fact, because oh, cool. it has connections, uh, not just because Brian Ansell wrote it, uh, but because of other things that will become apparent later. Ooh, I'm intrigued. Um... And yeah, it's just an interesting little little thing because a it's really fucking old, and games from that era uh, have a habit of being written in a way that makes them incomprehensible. Oh yeah, I bet. Uh, like you know how modern games do this thing where they have examples ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, apparently examples were invented in about 1993. <laughs> uh, so so Good yeah year for uh, inventions. Yeah, it was very useful for actually learning how your game system works. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the minis are 15mm minis, so they're like they come Tiny up, boys. Yeah, they they're like half the size of like an old 
like 40k miniature. Obviously, oh. they, they come up to like the knees of like a Primaris because 40k minis have like had scale creep something fierce. Yeah, I don't think they should be called minis anymore, honestly. It should be called. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I have a problem with that, but they're not mini. What? Okay, Mr. Mr. Matt. Like, I won't call you. I'll call you drummer because Mr. Matt was your father. Okay. How? What would you propose? What do you mean was? What have you done? He's my. I, he's my dad now. <laughs> okay, right, fair. Okay. Yeah, he's adopted me. Yep. Yep. That's what the car seat was for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... But yeah, drummer Matt. What would you propose we call them instead of miniatures? Um, the new ones, I mean. Smolliches? Yes, yes, that. Smolliches, because that's not mini, it's just it's small. small. You know, yeah. you, know when Matt, well. you know when Matt just agrees to things because he wants this to be over? <laughs> no, he agrees because he's my friend and likes my ideas. Right? I mean, in this one specific case, it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, wait. This one wait, specific wait, 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 wait. You know anyway, what? I'll be laser, thinking about that for a while. The laser bird miniatures are quite small, so they're they're really adorable, uh, but also they're very interesting because unlike say epic miniatures that are like hard, you know even smaller because they're the laser burn ones are maybe like two to three times as big as like an epic mini. Um, but once you scale them down so much to like epic size, they have to lose ninety percent of their detail just yeah. because of how small they are. Whereas these can still retain a, a shocking amount of detail. Oh, like good. if it's a, a human face or whatever, then it has to be very basic. But for like armor and stuff, they actually keep quite a lot. Uh, the Imperial Troopers, because there's an Imperium in it, because of course, of course, um, look remarkably like the Santarans from Doctor Who when they're in full armor. So Thought that's... they were Santarans. I'm not getting into that that deep, <laughs> deep cut you just made there to do with an Australian refusing to pronounce it the way the writer did. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, as an Australian, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, Laser Burn is super interesting. Uh, you can still buy it from a website called Alternative Armies. Uh, the original rule books and models are still put out by them. Well, it's not like the, the original rule books, like, seven quid. Yeah. Like, um, as a physical copy. And, like, you can get, like, little miniatures... Oh. Like for like fifty p. Yeah, I bought. And they are cute. That's I like, bought like new, not like someone's hoarded them from the from the eighties. No, like they're still no, making then, them. Yeah, yeah, they're still making them. Oh, cool. It, it's really really cool. Yeah, and like I said, I bought like uh, I did like a test order from them, and I just bought like four minis just to see how long they'd take. Didn't to they come. come like the next day? They came in. I, I ordered them like on the seventeenth, uh, it like late at night because. Basically, someone had left a comment about that laser burn existed, and so I looked it up, found these things, and became within, obsessed with it. Wrote half a script on it within forty minutes, and <laughs> uh, had then and had bought some already. And I got the I know I, I ordered them on the the night of the fifteenth, and they came on the seventeenth. Yeah, on, in the like morning, ridiculously huh. quick. Um, nice. However, I did order some like four days ago, and then they've not been dispatched yet. So God, it's like there's a global pandemic or yeah, something. Yeah, almost like there's, there's things. Uh, so, yeah, um, so I'm waiting for the actual rule book and stuff to arrive, because I've been going off a PDF that I found. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, so you can still buy them, so it's actually really cool. Uh, Ooh, is, it still, you, is it still on the same edition? Yeah, they only ever made one. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. more complicated than that, but that will be giving yeah, away that... fun things for the video. <laughs> uh, so, yeah... Uh, but yeah, I've been ha- having some fun, fun kind of going through that. It's it's really interesting. Uh, it just the, the sheer scale of them is is fascinating, and uh, I've I, like they they're one of those ones that they come with little bases built into them, but they're really like small because they're like you know um, plastic green army men. Yeah, mm. like they're those style bases, uh, like cast into just the really metal. shitty and probably quite um bent and they're uneven, uneven and they fall over easy yeah uh, so i've mounted all of mine on pennies you know what i can't <laughs> get over with like pennies and stuff if you use a penny as a miniature base it feels really wrong like you know you shouldn't be using currency for that but if you paid for a a, a um a like round base, disc of metal a round disc of metal or a round disc of plastic it would cost so much more than a penny probably yeah and yeah. it's just it's like I, that that just always blows my mind. It's yeah, because I often use pennies to like weigh down uh, mm, like certain metal models and stuff. Usually, like um, uh, uh, back in the day when uh, Devastators were oh, a God. plastic kit, but they had metal weapons, yeah, and yeah. they were on twenty five millimeter bases, so <laughs> they fall the over all the damn time. That was a good idea. Jesus, um, we are honestly living in. So- we are so 
pampered now <laughs> like dang like oh yeah back in the day where it's like yeah you get one model fuck you or like and it's literally like three kilograms in weight and also if you spend too much time handling it you'll fucking die <laughs> on the other side the models are like five times more expensive so inflation oh more than that <laughs> i mean it, it depends largely on which model yeah well, yeah of course. <laughs> but um but yeah anyway uh it, yeah, you'd weigh down those devastators with a penny, and that'd work quite well. I'm sure people used to use washers as well. Yeah, yeah I went out to buy a bag of washers, and yeah, it worked out as more expensive for the bag of washers than it would have been just to use the coins I was buying them with. So I was like, well, I'll just use <laughs> right? the coins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and especially now when nowhere takes fucking pennies, so you might as well use them. For, well, no one's uh, taking cash now. Yeah, so I mean, no one's taking cash because yeah. of uh, you. Yeah, the world is on fire. Um, How about yours? But anyway, metaphorically uh, and literally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but anyway, we're here to help you forget all that just for a brief yep. amount of time because, you know, we all need some reprieve, otherwise we'll all lose our minds. That is true. That is true. I actually wasn't going to say a single other thing about mm. it. So. I will say, I bought, well, Wib bought me today a little Donald Duck who's like a chibi little Donald Duck with like a clip. You know how they have like the clip arm so that you can clip them onto things like the side of a baby's push chair yeah. or something like that. And he is super grumpy He's got, like, really cranky eyebrows, but he's super, super cute and baby. And I'm going to post a picture of him on Twitter because he is the most adorable thing in the world. And the woman who was serving me in the Disney store was honestly, like, I kind of wanted to stop and just go, I have hearing aids. Could you please speak up? Because she was, like, I was, like, a foot taller than her and about 100 decibels louder. So (laughs) (laughs) maybe that was Minnie Mouse. I don't oh, think it. Shit. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Mm. Um, and like we were gushing about how cute and grumpy he was, and also we found out today that the Disney store refers to their um their employees as cast members, which I kind of just wanted to fucking strangle. Oh, the, a yeah, corporate yeah. Businessman. I mean, I, I knew that anyway because Disney do that with like the people that work at places like Disney World. They refer to their staff as cast members. That's really gross. Um, I think it's so that they... It, it, it feels like they're part of the magic instead of just having to pay rent. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. I, I'm I getting depressed it. again. Anyway, this Donald Duck was super cute and I'll put him on my Twitter at Snap the Sorrow. And also people have been buying me lots of really cute cuddly toys lately off Amazon. <laughs> yes. And my house is getting very full, but I don't actually care. It's the best thing ever. And I got a sleepy Charmander the other day and he is Oh, super I saw that good. one. I know. He's oh, so cuddly. Yeah. And like you turn him over and he's got like a little yellow tummy. And he's got like on it on his on his he's got like little yellow toe beans as well. It's just like oh, okay, I'm toe gonna cry beans. talking. Yeah, toe beans. Like you know, kitty toe beans. Um, you know, like like you know, you know cats on the other on side paws. of their paws. Their uh, pads. Okay, yeah, yeah, bad thing. Those are toe yeah. beans. Okay, toe beans, good. Or or, or beans. Yep. See, good. you can't see bunnies because they have secret beans. Because all like bunny bunny beans are covered by fluff. Yes. I'm going to carry on talking about things. I wanted to talk about something nice. So. Okay. Well, I was going to talk about uh, a new video game. Nah, let's talk about beans. I'm going to talk about the video game. <sighs> uh, I've also been playing, uh, I've played a little bit of um, Necromunda Underhive Wars. Ooh, nice. The, the new um, Warhammer-y game. Um, I, I can't remember the specific number, but it was uh, gifted to us entirely like out of nowhere by um, someone called Dan. Uh, they did have some numbers after their name, but I forgot to write it down. Mm. Thank uh, you, Dan. So thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Dan. One or possibly Dan two, possibly Dan, Dan three. Dan one two pi delete as a plus. It was. It will be with the the combination will be within pi. So. I, it was three yeah. numbers. I remember that much. Okay. Well, yeah, there's more than three numbers in pi, honey. True. Yep. There's, a, there's I, at least seven. I feel we're getting hung up upon, on, on this this very small issue. Well, someone's going to give drama ma- maths bonus. Anyway, I've been playing Necromunda Underhive Wars a little bit. Not too much because we're going to do something with it. It's going to be don't, pretty it's, sexy. It's, it's going to be mysterious. We're Ooh, doing something. It's sexy. We're going to do a thing. Um, I'm going to cover myself in jam and run away from my problems. Again, mm. uh, but yeah, so I've been playing a little bit of that. Um, it's a weird kind of game because I know that it's very heavily um, borrowing things from More Time because it's the same company that made that. Is that like a D blow kind of thing? No. Okay. 
No. Uh, I have, I, I know, I've heard of Mordheim, but I, I think it's like a strategy game? Okay. It's uh, a game where you can use a mouse. I'll tell you what, shall I shall I describe it because I know what it is? <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. Okay, so it's a um it's actually quite a strange like combination of genres. It's a fighting game. Right. Slash like Diablo like, you know, looter uh shooter because okay. they have guns in it because it's Necromunda. And oh, it's Necromunda now. We're not talking about Mordheim now. No, no, that's no. It's literally Necromunda, but the thing is, they couldn't actually call it that because it was it was already a copyrighted thing. So it's even kind though, of like it, um, even though Starcraft Mord- kind of like thingy. Even though Mordheim is is literally also a Games Workshop property. No, it's not. Not not with video games. Not they with didn't video have games. the license for it. So, so who got... had who had the license for Necromunda then? Because there is no other Necromunda video game. Uh, me. You have it. Yeah. Okay. So, so I sold okay. it to them because okay. I'm just a good person, okay. and I was like, I tell you what, you give me. Four pounds nine, and and a bag of like popcorn chicken, just like a, a garbage bag full of popcorn chicken. It could be cold or, or uncooked. Honestly, mix it up a bit. I like me some medium rare popcorn chicken sometimes. That's you know, upsetting. it's nice. It's to ha- nice to have squishy That's, and crispy. I don't like any of this. Yeah, it's it's fantastic, and then you just kind of like you know. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked, but yeah. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Could you just like fucking keep on topic, please, for like five minutes? <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. This is so unprofessional. Really, honey. Come can, on. Can I can I talk about the actual video games that exist? I have literally forgotten what you were talking about. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any- you honest. That's fine. Okay, so yeah, it's made by the same people who made more Maud- Mordheim, and it's kind of similar in it in its thing. Apparently, although I've never played Mordheim, I have. Uh, the basic idea is that it's a turn-based uh, like squad um, like tactics game. So you've got so much room to move, and then you have actions that you can do certain things with. So you shoot, or you can like kneel down and hide behind things and stuff. Um, it's, it's a really, like, it took me a while to kind of get used to how just the basic game functions, because it does kind of throw a lot of information at you at once, even in the tutorial, and you kind of just, I, what? Okay. Um, and what makes it really peculiar is that the movement phase, it's not like, um, like, you know, a lot of strategy games are in a sort of pseudo-isometric thing where they're, like, pulled out, like yeah. UX cons yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that. Um, this is not that you when you move a player you are controlling them like it's a third person action game as in you're physically moving them around huh. you just have so much room you can move okay yeah. uh which is that's, which, that's quite hands on i kind of like cuz i went i went into it with literally zero um like knowledge of anything about it and i kind of kept it intentionally that way uh, and yeah i went into it and was just like oh this is weird i've not played a like a kind of strategy game that's done this before um and it is really cool like seeing necromunda realized as a video game because it's you know because it's the this one of the spin-off games you kind of haven't really it's not been given the same kind of attention that say we, we've seen the, the 40k universe in a wider sense mm. realized in high def graphics on many occasions um, but you haven't really seen like Necromunda and that and the Underhive kind of world uh, realize like that. So like the character models and stuff all look really kind of fun and interesting. Um, the the main story because I've not played any of the um, like free play stuff where you can just pick a gang and like build them up. I've just played a bit of the story and the story seems to center at least in the early missions on being part of House Escher. They are kind of like the poster the the poster gang yeah um mm. and it's yeah it's pretty well put together um I, I won't say who but there's there's one particular voice actor who's pretty bad um <laughs> but the rest are pretty good uh and even the one that's bad is kind of bad in an endearing way so <laughs> you know that's that's fine um but yeah we'll we'll, t- we'll be able to talk a bit a bit more about that uh, later on when we do the thing that we're going to do with that video game um, I've also played a little bit of the game Convoy. Oh, I'm uh, listening. But, uh, which is I got it for you like a couple of months ago. Yeah, I think it was. I only realised like the other day because you didn't tell me you bought it for me. I just looked at Steam list <laughs> and went, "Wait, we've got Convoy." And I was like, "Yeah, I bought it for you." And you were like, "When?" I was like, "I don't remember." Months ago, and you were like, "Why didn't you tell me?" And I'm like, "I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know." It's just a blank. 
Yeah, I'm just like, uh, maybe I just forgot yeah. when I went and made a sandwich or something. Well, I am appreciative. Well, I always um, look out for things for you, because as much as, you know, you bully, you cyber bully me on the internet, I do actually <laughs> care about you and constantly try and throw money and affection and gifts at you because you're the best thing in the world, but whatever. Your big stinky Aww. butt face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, you made me blush. <laughs> um, Stinky butt. But uh, but yeah, uh, Convoy is basically a game in which you play. Uh, you you have a literal convoy. It's like you've got a kind of like think Mad Max a war rig type thing, but it's <laughs> nice. defense. But it's mostly defenseless, and you have other vehicles that are that are sort of protecting it. And it's like on a constant scroll, and you have to move the vehicles around. Um, get them into range of firing at other people and use special abilities. And it's kind of a roguelike style thing, so you're going from town to town um, buying upgrades. It, huh. It's in a lot of ways similar to something like FTL, but it's mm. much more hands-on and there's much more real-time things to worry about because although you can pause at any time to like issue orders to things, um, there will be like rocks that obviously are like will be going past because you're driving past them, but your perspective's kind of limited on the the people because it's all top down um and i find that it, it's incredibly harsh with if your car hits a rock at full speed it's just fucking dead so you mm. just so if you just are not paying attention to one car for like a couple of seconds and you just don't notice that it's heading towards a rock then you basically can just completely screw your run um <laughs> Which is a bit of a shame because, like, I, I have this problem with video games where I can only pay attention to so many things on screen at once, um, and that number is three, uh, which I, f I found <laughs> okay. out whilst playing uh, the original Castlevania and getting to the fight where you fight Frankenstein's monster with a little Igor uh, jumping around. Uh, because I could pay attention to my character, I can pay it moving around, I can pay attention to the Frankenstein's monster, I can pay attention to Igor. But then when Igor starts hurling projectiles, my brain has to blank one of those three, all the three <laughs> objects out to pay attention to the projectile. There's it's, only so many processes you, you yeah, can like deal with. That is an exact amount. Uh, and so you start off with three objects to pay attention to before other things join in. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I've been getting better at it by just being... Just whenever I start getting overloaded, I can just pause it and re-sort of... Uh, re rejig my kind of mind a bit. Mm. Well, I mean, um, that, that's good that you can at least have a have a breather. Yeah, so. it's it's good, and you do um, like you encounter very again very much like FTL. You like encounter little events that you know you might just take someone and, and you have to take them somewhere, or they'll, you'll get told there's a reward somewhere, and so you go to it. Uh, random encounters out and about because between doing the actual fights, uh, it then cuts to like a map that's on like a hex grid, and you just drive around and you've got fuel and you're just trying to get you you know you've got basically the whole the plot is that you your ship your spaceship crashed on this 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 area and um you you need to get the um the spare parts for it and so you're looking for them in the area uh they're all references so one's a flux capacitor one's a self-sealing stem bolt you know they're all but the thing is that one should be fucking useless because no one knows what self-sealing stem bolts are yeah. and nobody wants them yeah if you don't know uh self-sealing stem bolts is a reoccurring gag in star trek deep space nine uh it's where nog isn't it uh, i think it, the first oh, no, it's his dad the first time they appear i believe it's because uh, it ends up with nog and jake acquiring a huge batch of self-sealing stem bolts and no one wants them because most people don't seem to know what they're for mm -hmm. and <laughs> it becomes a reoccurring gag of like people will sit there and go oh so we've got a uh, you know we've got a delivery of self-sealing stem bolts or things like that they'll go oh what's you know they'll like they'll be looking through containers and one of the containers will usually contain self-sealing stem bolts or something and they'll say it out loud you know self-sealing stem bolts try saying that like five times fast i will not <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I I, I want to play it some more because I've only played like an hour or so of it because my my brain can't deal with too much of it at once. But it is fun. It, it it is fun, and yeah, you can often find it quite cheap. So that might be something worth looking at if you enjoy things like FTL and things like that. Um, I've also been watching some stuff. I watched a bunch of Ultra Q. 
uh, which if you've listened to the most recent Men With Funny Heads, you will know because we did a couple of episodes on it on there. Men With Funny Heads with Wib and Longfang discussing episodes of sci-fi slash sci-fi movies in depth with some humour, charm and lovely, lovely voices <laughs> available on all good platforms. Like Thank Spotify. You. And a Spotify couple of shitty app. ones. And a couple of shitty ones, but that's okay. <laughs> it's available on good, on good platforms and iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be well, sure to go on over and listen to it today. Uh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so um, Ultra Q being the precursor to Ultraman, it's the first thing in the Ultra series, but it doesn't have Ultraman in it. It doesn't have like a consistent big hero character. It's kind. It was kind of envisioned as like the Twilight, uh, Twilight Zone. It's kind of envisioned a Twilight. So you know, there's a really like emotionless teenager. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it was like a sort of anthology of lots of weird, like sci-fi bits of nonsense. You're right there. Okay, so you know how I just mentioned Twilight. Yeah. I remember that there's a part. Okay, so Stephanie Meyer put out a new Twilight book, which was just the first book from Udard's perspective. You mean that one she wrote like a decade ago? And then ago. was like, no, I'm not releasing it. And now I guess she wants like a new deck or, or like I don't know, a conservatory or something. Yeah, she's got to eat. Yeah, whatever. Um. Yeah, she put that out, and it's literally, like, you know the se- the hilarious scene in the movie that is also basically verbatim in the book, where she walks into class, and there's, like, a fan making her hair flow all angelically, and he looks like he's just shat himself, and he's like... <gasps> and, like, yeah, you know why he's doing that? Because it needs needed to be explained, not just, oh, God, she's hot, and I can't read her mind, and also I want to drink her blood. It's him literally sitting there internally going, okay, um... I'm going to kill her, eat her, and then kill everyone else in this room just to protect my identity. Uh, and basically going into how he's going to, like, murder all these innocent sta- like bystanders just so he could, like, drink her blood. Oh! And this is a reoccurring theme. Oh. And it's just like, wow. That sounds... That's, it's, it's an even more healthy relationship than we originally thought. Oh, good. I'm going to talk about Ultra Q now. Go for it. Uh, it it was just much... really funny to me, and yeah. I was just like, wow, okay. Okay. Uh, so, yes, it, Ultra Q was envisioned as a kind of Twilight Zone type thing, but because it was made in the late 60s, they were like, put more kaiju in it, because kaiju were big right now. I mean, I think... I mean, honestly, kaiju were big all the time. That's kind of hard. No, die kaiju were big all the time. <laughs> okay. Kaiju were not necessarily big. Okay, that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is the most, <laughs> the worst. Well, actually, I think I will ever do. <laughs> yeah, I think none so. of them are good, but that was the worst. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was incredibly shitty. Uh, but yeah, uh, and it's it's a fun little series. Uh, you you may be able to find the restored versions entirely on YouTube if you look for them. Which um, we wouldn't condone. But you fucking do it. Who which cares? you wouldn't condone, but also just fucking do it. Who cares? Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fun little series, uh, and it's. Um, it's very, very consumable because the stories are nice and simple. Uh, the characters are kind of just, like, likeable. And it's just a new, weird antagonist every week that may or may not be a modified Godzilla costume because it was made by Subaraya Productions and Eiji Subaraya used to work for Toho and so was on good terms with them and so could just nick off with suits and they wouldn't mind. It's a whole thing. Uh, uh, but yeah, I also have been watching Sequest DSV because uh, Shanus, uh, who sent us um, Space Fleet, also at the same time sent Se- the full, like, complete collection of Sequest DSV for me to watch because he knew <laughs> that that's the sort of thing I would watch. <laughs> and yes, I very much. I'm watching it. It's actually really quite fun. So if you're not familiar with Sequest DSV, it was put out in, I think, 1993. And the best way to put it is that... Okay, so imagine if Star Trek The Next Generation had the blo- the main bloke from Jaws as the captain. Who can do, like, sick acrobatics. He can. Um... And was underwater, so everything was wet. That's it. It's just Star <laughs> Trek, but wet. 
uh, and with the bloke from Jaws. It also has Ted but Raimi in it, which it has is weird. a dolphin. It does have a dolphin called Darwin, who it uh, I, I read up about, it and apparently at all times is not a real dolphin, is an animatronic all it's the time. It's because dolphins are fake as fuck. I mean, like, they, like dolphins just look fake all the time. Dolphins yeah. do look like they're made of rubber. So when you make a fake dolphin out of rubber, it turns out it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> not, honestly, it does look really good. Yeah, like considering it was done in the early nineties. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sequest yeah, is nothing weird... done in the early nineties looks good. No, yeah. including me. <laughs> Thank I... you for letting that hang in the air, so we all got to sit in it. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, I'm like, I can't think of any way of taking that that isn't it doesn't isn't upsetting. So let's just <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess I was technically like produced in the 80s yeah you were produced in the 80s really yeah but the same year as star trek next generation and the same year as uh predator Mm. classic uh the same year that meryl silverberg was born Mm. um Um, see i was just born the same year that the challenger blew up so you know i mean it's not a coincidence (laughs) no Um, and so we get back to (laughs) didn't chernobyl happen in 86 as well Oh no. Yeah, maybe you should have just stopped like <laughs> okay. like stopped doing all those world-ending horrible tragedies. Um, but yeah, uh, Sequest is is a surprising amount of fun. I remember watching it as a kid, but I didn't really remember anything about it like going forward and watching it again has been like just kind of adorable because it's you, you know how like Star like 90s Star Trek, especially TNG and Less so DS9 because it got a more kind of hefty story over time. Um, but like Voyager had it as well, where it's just very comfortable television to watch. It's, mm. it's, I honestly like seeing some of the episodes that you've been watching. It feels like that kind of like warm, cozy kind of like murder she wrote, diagnosis murder kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like oh, the, um, oh, yes. like, you know, there's, there's that kind of. I don't know, it's just this warmth. There's a form- Even though the subject matter is a yeah. bit... There's a formula, you know what's going to happen. And... It has slapstick that isn't really funny, but it's it's kind of endearing because it's so bad. Yeah. It's, it like, d- it's like silly granddad humour yeah, that it, isn't racist. It doesn't take itself 100% seriously, which sort of means that the sillier elements kind of work. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like it's, that. Yeah, it's um, just, it just seems kind of cosy. And yeah, it's just an interesting. It's it's a very interesting show show to to watch again. Um, the act because the basic idea is that there is this huge um submarine called Sequest. Uh, DSV stands for I think it's Deep Submersible Vehicle, something like that. Um, and it's this enormous thing, and it was originally uh, designed as like a nuke launching warship. Um, but it got retrofitted. Um, and they just stuck a dolphin in the launcher. <laughs> they literally stick a dolphin in its torpedo tube. At one oh point. my yes. god, oh, really? Uh, they put a dolphin in the torpedo tube? Did they like shoot like, it you, at someone? No, they're like, you can't shoot a dolphin out of that. They're like, we're not going to shoot him out of it. We're just going to open up and he can swim out. Okay, that's that's not as bad. Mm, yeah. I was just like, but they do, okay. they do, they do mount the the dolphin in a torpedo tube. It's true. Uh, however, so is is it like the salmon tube? No, it's a torpedo tube. No, but it's the, no, it's like the you know the <laughs> things. It's that... not the fish tube. Can you no. not do that noise again? <laughs> Why not? What's wrong with it, Matthew? Do you not like it? Maybe I shouldn't make horrible noises on like you know on a, microphone. An audio only medium. Yeah, drummer Matt. <laughs> but it's, it's the salmon fish it's not, tube no. where you it's, put dolphins no, in it. No, it's and not. Goes... It, it's not, and I. <laughs> I can't. I I can't stick to the point I'm trying to make at any point today. I am very tired. <laughs> Sequest DSV. Yes. Um, dolphin tube. Do- there is no dolphin tube. There is a dolphin though. His name is Darwin, and he can talk. Well, he's got this technology that means you can understand him, and he can talk to you. Um, so it's- he's like. So he'll. He's like, ah, yes, Bridger, friend. He's voiced by Frank Welker, uh, you know, Megatron, so that's funny. Yes. Huh. Um, not that Megatron. No, oh, then I don't care. The Megatron from the G1 cartoon. Okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's a cool series, and, and the, the, it's the whole thing, and it's set, because it's set underwater, it has this interesting thing. So everything's done with CGI, like all of the submarines and things. 
but because it's obviously got this, it's got like a filter over everything to make it like dark blue so it looks like it's in the deep ocean, it actually covers up the like shoddiness of the all of like the early 90s CGI quite well. Hmm. So it makes it look like late 90s terrible uh, TV <laughs> CGI as opposed to early 90s terrible TV CGI. So it actually works quite well in, in all honesty and... The, the whole conceit is that in the future of 2018... Oh, shit. Uh, mankind sort of realize, uh, sort of got better at, like, underwater technology and they've realised how to, like, you know, harness the sea for resources. So and talk to dolphins. A little bit. Uh, and so, yeah, there's, like, undersea colonies and things. Um, and the amount of guest stars that have shown up are kind of fun. Like, there's uh, one episode where... Tim Russ, who's Tuvok in Voyager, and Seth Green show up. That's Seth Green is a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's another one where, um, like, they it's basically an episode of Firefly because there's, like, a mining town, except it's an Australian mining town. Oh, yeah. And, it's, and, it, and there's, like, one guy who's taking it over, um, but he's actually played by the actor who played Ducky in NCIS. <gasps> Uh, he can't be evil. So he's playing the bad guy. So yeah, it's uh, apparently William Shatner shows up later. So oh, that's no. so that's going to be fun. Because mm. uh, I can't um, wait to see him literally chew the fucking set. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, he's a fun actor to see, but he's a bit of a wanker. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a limit to which I can be excited about William Shatner. Uh, but it's it's in, you know it's interesting when he shows up in things that aren't Star Trek because you know um, you get you're so used to seeing him play Kirk that uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. We're probably going to do an episode of it again on Men with Funny Heads at some point because it's just kind of fun thing. Also, uh, it's despite being a thing that's primarily a, a science fiction thing, it has in the early, I've watched like maybe okay, there's 18 discs of this complete collection. How how far <laughs> through are you? I'm I think I'm I've watched most of the fourth disc at this point. Oof, uh, that's dedication. Because there's two seasons. It's on DVD, so it's you know it's, there's there's like there's like three or four episodes. Yeah, but yeah, so. I get you, I get you. And already there's one episode that's about ESP existing, and another episode in which, well, they they go to what is basically the Titanic. It's not actually the Titanic, but the, it's it looks exactly like it. And they create its own their own fiction about like it's sinking. And a pocket of it is like just perfectly like preserved underwater, and it's got ghosts in it. And everyone's like, "Oh shit, there's ghosts!" And then they have to solve the problem with the ghosts. The sea's haunted. And help the ghosts like cross <laughs> over and anything. It's not like it would be in Star Trek where it'd be like some kind of alien or temporal phenomena. No, they're just literal this fucking ghosts. ghosts. And they're yeah. just like, "Yeah, no, these are ghosts." And so the whole episode takes place in like a 1910s ship. Whilst all these characters are running around, it's really peculiar. Wait, the, you were telling me that at the end of these episodes, they have some fucking guys sit down and talk to you about real world science, just like like no. Yeah, they're the, the, like science advisor for the show comes on and is like, "Hi, my name's I think it's Bill Ballard. I think his name is good name." And he comes on at the end and goes, "Hi, in this episode, we talked about sinkholes. In the real world, sinkholes do this." Blah, 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 blah. And or like, oh, the, um, so Sequest because it's this huge ship, it has multiple little submersibles that are remote controlled call, that they call whiskers uh, okay, that, that's kind of cute actually that go around it and like detect stuff so they're like it's eyes and ears um, hence whiskers yeah hence whiskers um, and they said oh yeah this is based on these submersibles and it talks a little bit about real world submersibles so yeah, just what? the end of every episode has like 30 seconds of some guy going oh by the way yeah, yeah okay but I want to know what the fuck Bill was saying about Titanic ghosts he didn't say anything about ghosts but he was talking about how um they have found, like, the Titanic, and I think they just found the Lusitania, which was another White Star Line ship that got sunk, I believe, by a German U-boat. Mm. Um, uh, before the uh, Titanic, I believe, the Lusitania oh, got sunk. Okay. I had a friend at school who was, like, fucking obsessed with the Titanic, so... Um, Yikes. Yeah, I, I learned was far it, more. Was it because of the movie? Does, did yes. that get them into it? Yeah, Okay, 100%. fair enough. I mean, that's not me passing judgment. You get into things however the hell you get yeah. into things. So Literally, I, I was just curious. the only time I've ever watched Titanic was because he watched it and I was there. I watched it once and then I watched... A, a friend of mine made me watch it again and I was like, yeah... 
Um, okay. And then, like, oh, we did get to watch Romeo and Juliet in English class. Yeah, we did as well. You mean Romeo x Juliet or whatever Romeo plus f- Juliet. That's, that's what it's officially Whatever called. the fuck it's called. The Leonardo that, DiCaprio one, which is... I, really I found weird. it pretty tedious, purely because... I mean, I'm sure the movie was fine, but it was everyone around going, Oh my God, like, Leo is so hot. And I'm like, he's a mop. I liked the part of that movie where... Um, one of the fathers of the families, I can't remember whether it was the Capulets or... Oh, shit, Montague. Montague's. Montague's. I can't remember which one it was. It was like the, the Patriot was like, he's at one point whilst they're like a couple of the kids are squaring off against each other. He's like, hand me my broadsword as he reaches for like a submachine gun mounted it's at the got back. Broadsword it's got broadsword written, written down the side of it. Yeah. Because like they call the guns like um, swords. Yeah, that's. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, but anyway, that was yeah. Sequest. It's it's interesting and and fun. Uh, it's kind. Of, it's kind of a bit of a pain to to look at these days. I think uh, if you haven't got the DVD, so you know if you can track it down, then it's worth a watch. It's kind of fun. Uh, the last thing to mention is just to carry on from something you mentioned last time is I may have been watching the lower decks, the new uh, Star Trek okay. thing. Uh, I have some thoughts. Okay, good. I like it. It's not okay. great, but mm-hmm. I like it. I like the lady. She's really cool. The fight lady. <laughs> yeah, like... So, I, I don't think every joke works. Mm. Uh, I, I think there's def- there's like uh, bits of it that I, I think are... As much as I hate, hate this term, it does feel like it's trying too hard to emulate... Like the kind of humor of other shows. Oh yeah, totally. Um, but I, I think like when it kind of settles down and tries to actually like tell kind of fun stories with the characters they've made, I think it does actually have a bit of heart to it, and I think it's kind of fun. And I didn't realize um, how much I kind of missed the epi- just basic episodic planet of the week format to, to Star Trek because. Despite it being a completely different genre and a different medium, the fact that it doesn't work on the big overarching plot thing that, you know, modern Star Trek tends to do where it doesn't have like lots, where it doesn't have like Planet of the Week episodes. It's all like part of one big narrative. But just doing these little, this is the problem this week episodes. We're going to go do a heckin' big splore. Makes it feel very Star Trek to me. Yeah, Um, no, very good point. And yeah, I was like, I actually, I'm actually enjoying this. Like, I, I, I've, and I enjoy the characters they've made, even if they're a bit, they can be a bit shaky sometimes. I, I feel like this is one of those shows that, like, if it gets a second season and they can, and they once they've kind of got their full kind of idea of what's happening and like where characters should be, I think it's going to be quite strong. I feel. Well, I mean, it's, it's fine Star Trek series because the first series isn't great. So that, <laughs> yeah. in fact, works in its favour. Mm. I mean, I suppose that, that, that thing that we, ke- that we keep saying is not technically true with DS9 because DS9 actually has a pretty good first season. That is the exception that proves a rule. And Picard's had a decent first season. The secondary exception that proves a rule. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, without getting into like spoilers or anything, because obviously it's not properly out over here or anything. But yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um... I did because re- even though I think the design for this uh, Cerritos, Cer- that's the name of the main ship, isn't it? Scoliosis. Uh, yeah, it just makes me think of churros each time. <laughs> churros look amazing. Yeah. Like I really do not like the design of the ship. It's really wonky and weird, but it's also supposed to be kind of a shit ship. So you know that's fine. Uh, but they they show another like new design, which was for the USS Vancouver, and I actually genuinely really like it. It's like. What would happen if there was a proper, like, sort of just post next gen version of a Miranda class? Um, and I and that's the sort of thing that makes me excited. So uh, I quite like that. <laughs> that was fun. But yeah, no, it's it's, it's fun enough. It does its job. I, I quite like the uh, Bajoran security guard. Uh, oh, like he's security he's officer. cool. He's, I like he's fun because uh, he just wants to blow things up. A man after my own heart. <laughs> Uh, and so that's that's cool. 
but yeah, uh, that's that, that's all I wanted to say about it. Um, mm. Oh, you you mentioned you, you mentioned something beforehand that you wanted to mention about the theme tune of it. Yeah, I really love the theme tune. I didn't mention. I realised I was a bit too negative on it last time and didn't really mention any of the things I liked about it because mm. I kind of just said it doesn't need to exist, which is, in hindsight, possibly slightly undeserved. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's I fine. love the theme tune. Me saying the that theme... it should never have existed is a bit harsh. <laughs> but the theme tune is amazing. I, I really like the theme tune. I think it's a really good balance of old Trek and like interesting. Because Picard theme tune is just wank. It's just, <laughs> it's just it is a big, really kind of miserable. total nothing. Anything. It's just it's the same as all like Netflix shows nowadays. It's like it, you can just copy and paste the theme tune between them, like it's generic CGI like... things flying around and close ups of. No, no teeth or whatever it is. Yeah. The thing is, what like, I always liked about, you know, the Star Trek Enterprise notwithstanding, like, mu- the intro music, is that it's all very kind of, like, hopeful and bombastic, and mm. it's fucking go and explore this shit that's awesome. It set a tone really yeah, well. Yeah, it set a yeah. tone really well. Whereas, like, you know, Picard is just like, the world is fucking shit. I don't think it's that bad, but it is... It, it, comparatively... It's miserable. I'd say the problem is, is that like both, as as Matt was saying there, like both that and Discovery just have very generic. Oh, it's so it. generic. Yeah. Like you, I don't under- quite understand how they've managed to make them all technically different. Yeah. Like not just them, but this isn't a lot of shows at the moment. It's just like they all have the same theme tune. I don't quite yeah, know how they managed mean. it, but but I really I like the theme tune of um, Low Decks. I think it's hmm. a really good balance of like basically doing proper Star Trek theme tune, but without just straight up copying one of them or doing nothing interesting. Yeah, I like I'm, I'm I like glad it. they didn't just use all of the old themes. Um, they've made, they've given it its own, like, audio identity, for want of mm. a better term. Uh, and you've also got... The intro's quite fun as well, because it's like the typical, oh, the ship... It's very similar to, like, Voyager's intro, where it's the ship kind of doing things and flying around space, except it's knocking into things or or, like... <laughs> Or not being able to get away from something like it's just bad things happening or a chunk falling off the ship like sort of matches the whole sort of idea of the show so but yeah no i, I do agree i think that the intro theme is pretty good but that's all i really wanted to say uh about uh the lower decks and anything really in general uh so matthew what have you been up to? hello i've watched a bit of telly not done too okay, much okay great but, um you may snipe no <laughs> uh, so we watched a couple of, se- of Netflix series. First up, we watched Norseman. Oh, How have you seen anything yeah. about Norseman? No. Is so, it like Vikings, but a little bit sillier? Yes, but not just a little bit. Like, a lot bit. Okay. Is it an actual comedy? It's a straight-up comedy, which you can't... When we first... You glance at like, the pictures from it, you're like, oh, it's just like, you know, Vikings or Game of Thrones or something, but with... I guess more Vikings, so so I just that was sort of not we didn't choose not to watch it. We just never got round to watching it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but someone mentioned it. It was funny, and I was like, funny, ah. And then we watched the, we watched the first episode. We're like, oh, it's a comedy, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it different. And yeah, it's it's okay. It's we watched the first series, and I think there's either two or three, so we may or may not keep going with it. But it is quite funny. But I have. So as as this title suggests, Norseman, it's set in whenever Vikings were around. What would that be like? Twelve hundreds ish, maybe. I actually Probably have no ish. idea when Vikings were around. Anyway, it's set in the Viking era in Norway with Vikings, but it's filmed. It's a Norwegian production, and it's filmed. They film each scene originally in Norwegian to show in the domestic market, but then they reshoot the scene in English so they can like oh. export it. And I have a sinking feeling that it's kind of funny because their accents are funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, like, right. I think some okay. of the jokes, some of the jokes are good, but some of the jokes really aren't. But some of the sort of middle of the ground ones, because they just say it in quite a funny way, and I'm sure there's like they don't put that much effort. And I'm not saying this necessarily as an insult, but they don't put that much effort into like learning the lines in English. So there's like weird hesitations and things where they're trying to remember the word, and it kind of just makes it really endearing. <laughs> So it's like, so it's just the performance is really awkward. It's like well, that Spanish yeah, kinda, advert from yeah. Reno 99. With like, the, have you seen that? It, uh, I, I, it's I, basically, well, I can't speak Spanish, but it's like this woman going like, 
ah, como estás? Like, it's just this really appalling, like, you know how people... Oh, is that from Reno 99? I think so. I've only ever seen it portrayed as being a real thing. Oh, no, (laughs) apparently it is fake. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like, you know when people would stand up in, like, language class and, like, guten tag, mein, like, ich heiße, fucking bellend, ich liebe... Bauma, I, I, wait, no, I accidentally said that well. <laughs> ich liebe Boomer or something. Yeah, you know, you're just like fucking hell. <laughs> no, this... The thing is, if that's if it's like someone says that in English, it's just like yeah, fucking drag it, honey. I fucking hate this language. <laughs> yeah, fucking... I mean, it's, it's not like that. I mean, all of the, all of their English is way better than. Oh, it would be better than. Oh, our I mean, English, definitely, yeah. definitely my Norwegian. <laughs> Probably definitely than my than our well, I know English. That... I know so, Ruth can say quite confidently in Norwegian, "I am the cheese." <laughs> so yeah, so you know she's kicking, she she's kicking all of her asses in like <laughs> in that regard. So, but yeah, no, 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 it's nothing, nothing at all. Like they're bad at the English. It's just, it just puts. I think the timings of the jokes land slightly differently, which makes them funnier than they might have otherwise be. If that's, mm. I'm trying to say it in a complimentary way, but also it's not. The jokes sometimes don't really hit home. I think if it was yeah, just. I- Straight up. So it the it, basically the oddities of the show's production lend an air of absurdity yeah, to I mean, the think, jokes, and also it doesn't seem like it crosses the international punchline as well. Yeah, yeah, there is that something. That one of the jokes or sort of ongoing jokes is that one of these characters might be gay, and he's a bit ashamed of it, and it's like mm, that's not really mm. a joke. So there's a couple of little bits where I was like, if this was, and again, absolutely nothing against the Norwegians, but if it was like. In Eng- like a British production, that wouldn't now made nowadays. That wouldn't really be the joke anymore. I I don't think. Yeah. So there's a couple of bits where it's just a little bit like mm, I don't know, but it was entertaining enough. Um, and it's on Netflix, so you know if you've got a Netflix subscription, no, no harm in in checking it out. It, there's definitely some bits that hit home, mm. and we'll we'll see where it goes in the next few series. It's a, it's a European series, so it's only like six or eight episodes. So you're not like investing too much to ch- yeah. check out the whole series. So. Um, yeah, it was fine. I think is my amazingly <laughs> rounded review of it. Mm, have Some you seen the... Vikings? No, I haven't. I really want to. Um, my brother was like obsessed with me seeing it because he's like, "You'll love it. You'll love it." There's like a woman in there. I can't remember her name. It's like Berghild or something like that. And it's like, "Oh, you're just like her." And I'm like, "Okay." And then I watched like a few episodes of the first season, and it fucking sucked. No, really. And it was like, I like how, like, you know, they're pronouncing all the names, right? Like, Bjorn and stuff like that. I was like, that's cool. And then it's like, my, my brother was like, oh, yeah, you've just got to watch three series before it gets good. And I'm like, okay, I'm <laughs> fucking stopping right now. <laughs> Thanks. It's like, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm over 30. I've got fucking, I've got to sit in my chair and complain about my fucking back hurting. I can't be fucking watching three seasons to wait for something to get good. I got fucking, I got, fu- I got the government to fucking complain about. I got rent to fucking pay. I've already watched Star Trek Enterprise. I know what it's like to wait three seasons for something to get good. Yeah, we've paid our fucking dues. I'm just gonna go outside with a fucking broad sword and just fucking like fight a cab. I don't need this. I think that's when it gets good for me. But yeah, I'm just cranky and I can't be asked to sit through certain seasons. I mean, yeah, there's one thing to getting through a season and then it gets good. Getting through three is a quite a commitment. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it was three specifically, but no, it was no, like no, it but... was at least like one yeah. or two, and I'm like, nah, I, I can't commit to that. Especially because it's not like an English series, so it's like, oh yeah, it's like twenty fucking episodes, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch twenty episodes of a show I hate. Actually, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> because if I hate it, it's funny. Whereas I if I just I, don't think it's interesting, then I can't I'm, say anything. I have watched dozens of hours of Ancient Aliens over the You last can play the Colonial oh. Marines and Duke Nukem Forever. You cannot say a thing to the point where, like, you keep doing all this stuff to the point where I think that maybe you're trying to soft suggest it's a kink for you. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, Snipe, After if you want to sat- slam my balls into the fridge, I'd be like, okay with it. It'd hurt a lot, but I mean, I guess I'm scum. <laughs> the, th- the thing with, like, really bad media is every now and again you'll come across one that tickles you in the exact right way that you... I, do, I, I think you're, the affection that you may have for it 
isn't ironic. It's like you just genuinely kind of love it. After Fall Insanity is the perfect example it's of that. It's a kind of Stockholm syndrome and no. maybe some kind of sunken cost fallacy. No, it's just so it's just so crap that it's uh, hilarious the whole time. Fair. Because it's it, it's earnestly trying to do something and failing so spectacularly. Oh, that's that's camp. That's campy. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, that's what. That's, it's like the, yeah. why the room is so like funny, but also don't think about it too much because Tommy Wiseau is an absolute fucking scumbag, <laughs> and I hate him a lot. And also, there's a lot of his ass in that movie. There is far too much of his ass. When you watch it, when you watch <sighs> the room for the first time, and you're like, there is a lot more nudity in this than I expected. Yeah, especially awkward when you watch it with a friend's like younger sister. Yeah, we're <laughs> just like, oh my no, okay, didn't realize this was happening in this film. We just thought it was a funny bad film. Oh no, mm. <laughs> yeah, that was. Awkward. It's just, just, it's just boys, my immortal. That's all it is, but only somehow worse. <laughs> also, can I get a shout out for the guy who plays the friend who leaves his pants in his friend's fuck like underneath his friend's couch, and also gets a blowjob, but before the woman's even gotten head to his dick, he's like. He's he looks like he's had some of the best fucking like like ecstasy ever. So he's like he's like, oh my god, that's so good. And she hasn't even gone near his dick yet. So like like shout out to the fact that there's like a mutant in there who can just like telepathically suck dudes off. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's like a little bit of little hidden. I mean, personally, lore. I don't want to shout him out because um I, I personally um I mean, unless you're he right, he deserves his anim- anonymity because you know. Let's be honest, being in that movie is like a punishment. No, it's just I personally think it's a little rude to go into your friend's living room to get a blowjob uh, without telling them. Yeah, don't don't fuck on your friend's furniture. Unless unless you know you've unless your friends are into that. You know that's all it's all been squared off and that's fine. Yeah, um, or you just put seems, a tarp down or something. It just seems a bit rude. Sandbags. To me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's just. Yeah. It's like you know, like like drama that comes in and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna fuck your couch," and we're like, "We know." Yeah, that's that's an arrangement that we have. You see, we don't mind because he brings us like pastries from a shop called Birds, which is only available in like like Derby. It's like a bakery, <laughs> so he brings like really tasty like. You know, hey, hey bakery. bakery is underselling it. It's not just okay. a bakery. Okay, I forgot. But do continue. You, do continue. I, I, I forgot that you literally have a fucking Birds body pillow. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that has to sleep in between you and Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Derbyshire chain of bakeries. Yeah. They do okay coffee. Um, they do really good sausage rolls and stuff. And yeah. Like, their pastries yeah. are very nice. So, yeah, he, he kind of, like, brings those round, you know, and then fucks the couch for, for 27 minutes. Never longer than that. Never less Never than less. 24. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Very precise. Orderly. Yeah. <laughs> Just how we like it. Matthew, have you done anything else? Um, Yes, we've... um, our, Yeah, we've been watching a series... Another Netflix series called Sense Eight, which I honestly hadn't I've heard, heard of. But really I really had good such a, about. such a big budget. It's such a big thing. I just hadn't ever really heard of it. I was like, how have I missed this? <laughs> but um, we got recommended it, so we've been starting watching that. Um, uh, 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 isn't that like a um, like a? It's a Netflix natural kind of. Yeah, kind of. So it's powers an, kind of thing. Not not quite. Well, not quite powers or such. So it's a Netflix thingy made by the Wachowskis. Is that how you pronounce it? Wachowskis, yeah, the Wachowski Wachowski Wachowski. sisters, yeah. Yep. Uh, in 2015, I think. So it's like a bit old, but not that old. Mm. But I think it was it was before Netflix started making everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it has a budget because it's set in... So the, 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 the gist of it is is that you've got these eight people, hence, hence eight with the number eight in the title. Ooh. Yeah. I like yeah. it already. Very good on point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and there's eight people around the world. I think there's there's what there's like two in the states and one in Mexico and London, Berlin, South Korea, a few and uh, I've lost count of how many that is. There's eight people around the world that have all got this weird telepathic psychic link of some kind. Hmm. And we haven't got to the end of the series yet, so I'm not sure. So you're sort of slowly learning about this. So that's not really that many spoilers. Because you sort of you get the gist of what's going on with this, and then you sort of learn more about it. So we haven't really had it explained. I don't even know if it is going to be explained properly. But yeah, we've watched the first sort of six or so episodes, and they're you know hour long, chunky episodes. It's quite it's good. And we're quite enjoying it. It's it's very weird because we got a lot of people saying it was really good, but I don't know if it's just because now we're watching it. And it's five years later, and sort of we've like the world's matured slightly, but it's very 
everything about it is a cliche in some way. Mm. It's very like, oh, they're doing this thing. Oh, that's really obvious. Oh, but they're they're still doing it. And it's sort of like, oh, was this just made before it became a cliche? Well, I mean, or is this like, everything? That's... It's very the... cheesy. Yeah, okay. the Wachowski sisters are really not like, um, they're not strangers to look like to basically creating something that is aped constantly. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, I will say, because although I have not seen the series, I have heard a few things about it. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that it does go places yeah I th- <laughs> so, yeah honestly i didn't know it was the wachowskis if i if i did i probably would have watched it earlier <laughs> i think it's both it's both of them in the first series and then I, I i can't remember which but one of them one of them leaves for then the next i think there's three series i mm. think there's at least two um, yeah i so think it, as it gets towards the end um there's some there's some stuff that happens in it that is uh very interesting that i have been told about and i, I will mm. not spoil for you uh you will no doubt when you get to that part you'll go oh that's the, that's bit, the bit that he, he was talking about <laughs> because that's a thing i've not seen in a show before Okay. Bum. Okay. <laughs> it was a little bit. I don't know. I mean, there has been lots of butts and tits okay. and dicks so far. <gasps> dicks. So there is there. Yes. yes. Okay. So like, and a very and a is... very 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 moist double ended dildo. Like the very uh, like in okay. the first like ten minutes of the first seat of the first oh, episode okay. or something. So, uh, you I'm just see sh- it drop on the floor and splash slightly. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, that's happened. Okay, Bonk. but I'm I'm gonna like tell you there are some types of silicon that are just constantly like very tacky. Oh, so... this, this this isn't just tacky. No, <laughs> it, it splashes sounds... when they drop it. <laughs> that's actually really fucking. Funny. I like it's quite, it, it's yeah. pretty great. <laughs> I, I, I'm now. I, I don't know why, but you, I want to now use the phrase like, "Oh, that plot point dropped like a double dildo, <laughs> like, like a moist like, double dildo." Like, like, yeah, yeah, that works. That works. That's pretty fucking rare. Yeah. So our oh favorite. Could you I, like? Oh, go on. Mm, sorry. sorry, no, you don't want to know what I was about to ask. Please okay. continue. Well, I, I want to say about my my favorite thing or our favorite thing so far of this series. So it's got quite a few cliches and various cheesy bits. One of those is which is an amazing car chase theme to music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like whenever there's a car chase, and then actually a few other times when there's a tense bit, it's like a proper like piano going like... So we're like properly getting into these car chases because it's really <laughs> cheesy, like low-end piano music. I mean, it's like, this is so cool. It yeah, like, reminds me full on of like a you know Blues Brothers car chase or something. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. like, they're not... They're not being fun with it or not being silly with it. They're like trying to have a serious car chase. But then there's like basically Blues Brothers car chase theme in the back. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great. That does <laughs> like, sound really I don't think it has the desired effect that they were going for, but we love it. <laughs> no, that sounds terrific. <laughs> it is excellent. It's, yeah, we like it happens at least once an episode and we're just like, come on, get to the car chase bit or the <laughs> bit that they have the car chase music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite satisfying so far. But I, yeah, I have heard it goes, it goes weird places. So... Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm excited to see why. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's all we've been up to, really. Okie dokie. The Snipe. It me. It you. What have Hi. you been up to? I have been watching a bunch of spooky movies. <laughs> now for the segment of the podcast, Snipe recounts the horror movies she's watched. <laughs> Hi, I'm Snipe and I watch the spooky movies. Okay, so I finally got round to watching The Nun. My dad was a nun. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He stood up in court. They asked him what his occupation was, and he said, "Nun." <laughs> that's a that's a uh, black adder joke. Yes, it is. Yeah, and I I basically only come up with it because I know it. Wib has to finish it. Yep. <laughs> he cannot let it hang at all. Mm. So like, if, if I go, "Great booze up, Edmund," do you have an explanation for that? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, he can recite like fucking swathes of it. So... I, I should got I, I should remember the exact wording that he says there. Honestly. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, uh, so I watched the Nun, which is part of the Conjuring cinematic universe. Which every how time many, I say it, yeah, how many films are there in this cinematic universe? There's like three. Con- I think there's like three Conjuring movies. There's Annabelle, Annabelle Creation, Annabelle Comes Home. There's the Nun. And I think that might be it, actually. So there's quite a few, and I, th- like, I'm sure I'm probably missing some or something. But yeah, th- there's there's a good few. 
But the thing is, it's following like Ed and Lorraine fucking, I can't even remember because they're just such fucking hucksters. And like, I need to see The Conjuring 2 because that's basically like, they go to London and are like, let's help out this girl who's basically Reagan from The Exorcist or something. I don't fucking know. So that's going to be fun. Mm. But yeah, like, honestly, I just wanted to watch The Nun because like Bonnie Ahrens is in it and she's the woman who plays The Nun. And she's just so gorgeous. I love, like, her face is so interesting. Like, she, because, like, they literally just, like, made her pale and, like, gave her a spooky, like, like, pallid skin tone and contact lenses. But but that's just how she looks. She's got a very intense look. She's got, she's fucking amazing. I love her. She was a guest judge on Dragula. (laughs) Oh, so good. And honestly, it was just really cool to, like, just see her kind of fucking about. The movie, other than that, was just a bit, eh, whatever. They literally have a French-Canadian that they just call Frenchy. Good. And it's like, uh... But he, like, doesn't want to tell anyone that he's can- he's French-Canadian, because then he'll be less fuckable? What? In his, his, mm. his own, like, thing. He's And he's also, like, super, like, into the, the lady nun who's, like, accompanying the father to go to this monastery where... It's barking like, up the wrong tree there. Yeah. <laughs> um, where content warning, there, there is suicide and kind of, like, suicide imagery and stuff like that. Uh, because a, a nun has taken her own life. And they're like, this is really weird. What the hell? Oh, there's something evil up there. And it's just the nun. Just Bonnie Aaron's just, you know, having a bit, bit of a chill out. And... Yeah, it's fine. It's just it's not it's not scary. Um, it's got a, it's got a couple of jump scares, and that's about it. But I just really liked seeing Bonnie Aaron's just just being her fucking spooky ass self. <laughs> it was very fun. Um, I watched a I watched a really good one that I didn't think I'd actually like uh, called Eli. Um, e L I. It's about a little kid who's um, he's got like the oh I can't remember what it is, but it's 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 like. When when a, when a person is like allergic to everything, so you have to keep them in like a bubble. Yeah, you know, yeah. or like like they they have to live in a clean room, and everything you give them has to be like thoroughly like uh, decontaminated. Yeah, it's like they basically don't have an immune system. Yeah, yeah, and like it's this weird thing where if he's outside, it, like he he like it starts out and they put him in like a little like um like a little clean suit, and there's just a bunch of these like thirty year old men who start throwing fucking rocks at this like nine year old boy. And I'm like, gee, even for horror movie standards, that's fucking, that's intense. <laughs> and the, they they cut his suit and you see his skin starts going like really red and like intensely red and blotchy and he's having trouble breathing. And they're like, oh no, and they duct tape him up. And and it's kind of like the family is taking him to this very special um, like clinic. Because of course it's America. So, you know, if, you, if anything happens to someone you love, you have to pay, but you basically have to ruin the rest of your life. Uh, for reasons, because um, capitalism is horrible. Anyway, the American healthcare system is a system of mass genocide. It's, yeah, literally is. Anyway, anyway, this movie. So they go, they go to this place, and there's like it's like this weird mansion, and like they walk in, and like they go through like a decontamination like kind of chamber, and then they walk in, and like the lady who's like runs the place is like, it's okay, Eli, you can take off your suit, and he's like, mm, no, I'd rather keep it on. And props to this kid, he's a really good actor, mm. and I like that's like I really really love like a uh, spooky house with ghosts like that fuck with kids or whatever because it's always really funny seeing if the kid can act because I mean if the kid can't that's fine, it just makes it more entertaining for me. And like you know, if it especially if it's a shit movie anyway, it's just funnier. Mm. Um, but no, this this kid is very good. He's mm. he's a very good actor. And yeah, so she's like tours him around the house, and it's this old country house that's like yeah, it's like all purified and stuff, so he can wander around and be okay. And like as it goes, like creepier things start to happen. You see some ghosts. Um, there's there's a, there's another little like there's a girl on like who comes up and like knocks on like the main window and it's just chats through him through the window, um, and she's like oh yeah uh, they couldn't help the last one who I can't remember the last kid's name is like P or something it's like yeah they couldn't help P either and he's like what, and they start like like realize and like you see him going in for treatment which is which his parents aren't allowed to go in with him into this big fucking scary operating room where he gets these painful procedures done 
And, like, they're literally just going, oh, bring me the bone, like, stabber and all this shit before he's even, like, under general. And it's like, you, this, this, this mounting kind of shit is fucking wrong. And it has such a satisfying conclusion. I really, like, that was good. Mm. Really liked it. Um, so I can really recommend Eli. That was, that was really fun. Um, Paranormal Activity 4, watch that. It's... My biggest problem with it is the fact that... Well, there's two problems. One, the main character... Just, is, just the two. Yeah, just the two problems. Honestly, like it does do some bits well. Um, not... Not, I would say overall, this is a fine movie. If you want to watch, you want to watch a spooky camera movie. This is fine, you know. It's not great, yes, but it's not bad. And like, the main character, the the person who has the camera all the time, is like the teenage daughter who's like fifteen. Who, problem number one on the cover of the DVD, she's like draped across her bed, and it's it's quite it's quite dodgy and I'm like that's literally a child okay that's a bit much mm-hmm. it's like she's like 15 that's really creepy and two is that everything has to relate to the like first second and third movies so it's like I think I was talking to you about this about how um, I understand why because they literally wouldn't be able to get the funding to make the series but oh I understand but, um, but I, I do feel like the paranormal activity films would probably end up being uh, more individually better movies if they weren't committed to constantly if, um, building up this this unit this single story this single yeah. universe and were just allowed to be Honestly, individual was, hauntings yeah and, if it was yeah. more anthology mm. I think that would be pretty cool but um, you never get but no but, no but no one <laughs> no would producer fucking, would get would give them the money to do yeah, that yeah and so, like yeah. a lot of people wouldn't go see it I probably wouldn't either because you know I'm I, I acknowledge I'm part of the fucking problem I know um, but yeah. And even if it was following, like, the same demon, that'd be something. Mm. But, like, yeah. And it's, like, uh, fine. It's it's fine. Um, but speaking of, like, the, um, the whole anthology thing, it kind of does that with Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, which is, like, movie five. So is there seven or six in total? There's six in total. Yeah, the seventh one's being made, isn't it? Yeah, I like, think oh, so. Well, it's it's in production. I think some, well, as much as it can be, as much as yeah. anything's in production. In <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, contact warning for this for eyes, and there yeah. is. It's not. It's not particularly. You don't see any blood or anything like that, or like gruesomeness. It's just um, at one point a dog is is being levitated into the top corner of a room, and it's in obvious distress. But that's really the only animal cruelty that happens. But it still might really upset some people. Mm. And the eye thing is pretty fucked. So it's not like it's not like Dead Space Two, but it's just really uncomfortable. Mm. It's it's about something being like in an eye, like pulled out of an eye, and it's just a bit the. But I actually like. I thought this one was pretty good. Mm. Um, it follows a bunch of um, like teenagers who like just left school. And they're living with like their abuela, and you know, just hanging out. And it, of course, it ties into the fucking like standard kind of like oh. And then there's there's these these two girls, Christy and Katie, and a baby called Hunter. Oh, that's weird. Oh well. And then it it does kind of add like make out that well no, it's like there's a woman who they keep like mocking because she's she's a witch or that you know they say she's a witch and and um like they drop like a gopro down the ventilation system and watch her and there's just like a naked woman standing there and and like they start freaking out because like honestly like hector's my favorite character he's like the the silly kind of mate Mm. of the main character and he's great because he's just he's just a he's just a shitty teenager Who's he's like a good dude, but he's a shithead, you know what I mean? And he's like, oh god, it's so good. And then obviously the abuela comes in and just starts beating them for looking at naked women. <laughs> but before like you know she comes in, like they see they see the old witch lady like drawing the paranormal activity symbol on the woman's tummy in blood, and she's there's a naked symbol? too. Yeah, there's a symbol. It's like a weird triangle thing. Uh, like literally like um, on the cover of the marked ones, you know, with the really extended eye socket. Yeah, like the bony one. Uh, he's like holding a rosary with like the symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, it's been in there since like the second one. Oh, all right. 
I think. Or maybe the first one? I don't know. It's been a while. It's been... I admittedly, you have watched so many movies that seem to all have the same plot in the last, <laughs> like, six months that, honestly, how you can keep track of which things come from which movie, uh, honestly, I'm very I'm impressed. Like, Honestly, I, f- I forget the, f- my f- the faces of my family... But not which paranormal activity fucking movie I watched. <laughs> but yeah, um, and like you know, it progresses and like and like the main character, um, I think his name's Jesse. Yes, yeah, Jesse. He starts exhibiting like weirdly supernatural powers, okay. and it's actually pretty fun because like he just acts like a teenager would be. Like he's like he he like. Like the camera turns on, and he's like, "Quick, Hector, Hector, film this, film it." He's like, "What? What?" You know, and he's like super excited, and he's like, "Watch, just watch." And you see him stand, and then he kind of just like he leans back, and he kind of like starts to fall down, but then he stops at like a perfect ninety degree angle, and like of all, they start like freaking out, like you know, just just like people would. They're, they're like, he's like, "Ah, oh, de- how the fuck are you doing that?" He's like, "I don't know," and he just keeps doing it. <laughs> And it's, it's like, oh, that's funny. They're fucking around with it. And then, like, you know, they get jumped by a couple of, like, fucking thugs. And he, like, just, like, Goku punches one of them, like, into this vending Ghost machine. Ghost punch. Yeah, and then he just starts getting really weird. And they're, they're doing, like, Ouija shit on, like, a Simon Says. You know, like the, yeah. like the red, red, green, green, blue. Mm. You know, where, like, he'll ask it questions and it'll, like, go, bip, 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 with, like, red or green, yeah. yes or no. And it's like, ooh. Um, there's like... It, oof. The, 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 of course, the, the magic, you know, old lady and magic old, like, like dude. Like, you know, the, the abuela takes them to this guy and, he, and he's like, rub eggs on your grandson and then he won't have demons anymore or whatever. As a general rule, if someone tells you to rub eggs on your grandson, you probably shouldn't, like, <laughs> pay too much attention oh, no, to it's what an they old, have to um, say. It is actually an old thing of, like, you know, it's like an old uh, Wiccan or pagan thing as well. Like, you basically, you rub an egg on, like, a part of your head, and that's supposed to, you basically put the negative energy... It's, it's supposed to, like, basically um, lift curses. If you've been cursed, that's what you do, and then you kind of, you, you either bury the egg or you smash it. Um, it's, it's I think the problem thing. is is that I find the term rub an egg on someone to just be an inherently funny sentence. It's incredibly <laughs> sexual if it's hard-boiled, though. Too sexual, mm. really. Yeah, honestly, that, that would make this movie unwritable, let's be honest. Yeah. But yeah, and honestly, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Honestly, it, it takes it a bit of a new direction. It is a little bit annoying that it has to tie into the whole, like, the previous ones, but honestly, the actors did really well. I love Abuela so much. I want her to be my Abuela. She's beautiful. And yeah, it was it was entertaining. Especially because, okay, this is kind of mild spoilers, but there's like a couple of like gangsters that live across the road that um the main characters were friends with like his younger brother. And his younger brother like goes missing and they think he's killed someone and, and it's all ooh. So like they go over and they go, We we think we know where the people who like hurt Oscar um like live come with us and then like him and his gigantic fucking like heavily heavily tattooed like dudes just go drive to this like farmhouse and just take like there's a chrome shotgun and like a fucking like mp5 and then like one of the like witches just runs screaming at him and he just fucking blows her away and i'm like i want paranormal activity to end with two fucking gangsters going in and just shooting up a farmhouse full of evil witches. I want that so that's desperately. How, that's how this whole, like, evil curse gets gets lifted. Just That's all, that's all I wanted. <laughs> just get fucking <laughs> murdered by, by, like, the mob. Yeah, just a couple of fucking, like, gangsters just go in and blow them all away. And then, like, the fucking can, demon's like, oh, shit. Can um, it be, like, a weird temporal thing and they can be, like, old-fashioned, like, 20s gangsters? They're not, though. They're I know just, they're not. Like... I know they're not, but that would be, like, an added layer of fun, I feel. <laughs> it's like, ah, this is my neighbourhood, see? <laughs> just blowing just away. Just down with a Tommy gun. <laughs> yeah. And that's that... how the ghost is killed. <laughs> the, de- the demon is, is, is like, that... purged honestly, by Tommy guns. Honestly, I was super fucking psyched for that to happen and be the case, but of course it's fucking not. Of course not, because we're not allowed good things in this world. No, and honestly... I'm gonna headcanon that that's how the that's literally how the series ends. It's just 
these two fucking gangsters, like these two really hot gangsters, <laughs> go and mow down all these evil, like, like, this evil coven, and then that's it. The demon's just like, well, I'm not gonna fuck with them. I don't want to get shot. <laughs> But yeah, then unfortunately is the last one. Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. And this movie fucking blows. I had to stop every five minutes to pause and point out a really annoying editing thing that they were fucking up to Wib, who is an editor. <laughs> so he could sit there and go, no, they, like, why would you use the worst effect possible? Fucking After Effects has one <laughs> built in that looks exactly like it. Why are you doing this? A, VC, a VCR recording fucking camera from the 80s would not be filming in widescreen HD. And just getting super mad. It's so funny. <laughs> and also I got super mad as well because it was really annoying. Um, the little girl is really cute because there always has to be a kid. But like, there's like the little girl who like, because it's of course it's the demon Toby again, because apparently he's just such a slut for. I don't know what he just he just likes possessing like kids and just fucking with them and stuff, um, but this time they have what basically amounts to a camera obscura, um, and I'm making that reference uh, in reference to Fatal Frame, Fatal Frame. Uh, or Project Zero, which were some PlayStation 2 Japanese horror games. Oh, they, they carried on making them. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying that that's where it started. Oh, yeah. Um, where you would wander around spooky locations dressed in stupid anime fucking clothing, uh, which really would take you out of it, and take photos of ghosts because, like, the camera would be able to... It was like a spirit lens, and you could see the, the spirits through the lens of the camera and when you took certain photos of them it would damage them um it's basically that but you can't damage ghosts and it's an 80s vhs camera and it's an 80s vhs camera which has blue leds which weren't weren't invented until around the 1993 it's the, it's the late 90s like, those were yeah, invented, late 90s. which is why like early 2000s electronics always had a blue LED rather than anything else because it was the novelty because they ha didn't have them before that. Yeah, so this is like, you know, they open up the camera and it's got like fucking six blue LEDs in it and Wib immediately just like punches a hole in the roof. <laughs> fair, um, fair. Yeah. Fair reaction to any kind of LEDs, honestly. Honestly, yeah. yeah, like fuck LEDs. Also, like the brother in this has the biggest porno stash I've fucking <laughs> seen. I did see him and you're right, yeah. Also, like... He looks like Tom DeLonge in the first date video. Yeah, and then there's... Oh my god, then there's like... I don't know who she is. I think she's supposed to be like the mum's friend who is titty spiritual woman. Okay. So the, the way you're introduced to her is she's... Via the tits, I guess. Yeah. No, she, oh. she runs up... <laughs> to hug moustache, mustachioed dude, and she is seriously going to put an eye out with those things. <laughs> and I honestly, as someone who has, who maybe has a bit too many boobs, I have too many boobs, yeah. like, I was wincing, because that fucking hurts. That's what really pisses me off. Well, not really even <laughs> piss me off. It just makes me cringe and roll my eyes anytime I see, like, anime or, like, like a video game character with gigantic tits just flapping around when they run. It's like, that fucking hurts a lot and i was like god i hope they only took one shot of this because those those poor tits that poor woman and like you know like so the dad's walking around with the camera he's like well this is so old how cool is this check out the deinterlacing that you know windows movie maker fucking has i guess I, I could, the interlacing art, it's it, so it's, bad. the interlaced uh, effect they put on it is something which I'm, I was looking at and going like, I could literally do better than that in Sony Vegas. Yeah. Um, that that should never be the case for a movie that was at cinemas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, you know, they're like, oh, this is really cool. And they go into their, quite honestly, disgustingly opulent, like, living room. Their house is repulsively expensive. Like most of the houses in this series, apart from the one in the marked ones, and I couldn't help but notice that they're all Hispanic in that. Yeah, more social commentary here. Mm. The the world is bullshit, and I'm now art ne art never has anything to say about politics ever. Sorry no. for being political and talking about I don't know uh, women. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so like he looks in the center of the living room with this fucking camera obscura, and it's just this really like obvious like fucking 
like 3D distortion and he's like whoa that's so weird and he walks walks into it and he goes fuckier and then he walks away and it's even less fuckier and it's like oh it turns out that the demon that calls itself Toby can just be caught on camera now and it's just a really generic shit black puff of smoke oh with an angry face. That sounds like that definitely... Ooh, it was scary. It definitely improved the series. You know how I always say what stops these from being funny is that I, am, I imagine the demon or whatever just like literally like like walking over to someone's like computer and just knocking their Pepsi over. Like they're a cat. Like they're a cat. Yeah, this makes it real. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's not even funny anymore. So I can't imagine like a little gremlin going over and like, I don't know, yeah. untuning all the, like detuning all the guitars or something. But yeah, and like, of course the little girl is like, oh, hi, Toby. And there's like this black fucking like evil fart smoke that just goes and hangs out in the kid's room. And there's all these fucking things like, oh, yeah, come and like, come and play with all the others. And it's like, what? So now you've just got like, so he's like a kitty collector now. Fantastic. Okay. I like Pokemon. Apparently. Yeah. And like the spiritualist woman takes the kid and like... And her friend and the, the wife, and they're just like, oh, let's just go and fuck about for, like, an evening, something like that. They go and visit someone and spend, spend the night or something. So, like, the dad and Miss Mustache, who are brothers, um, they're, like, looking at, like, because they found a box of the tapes with the camera obscura that is literally just a box of tapes from, like, the second or third movie where it's, oh, it's the third movie where it's, like, an 80s prequel. Mm. Um, and it's just videos of Christy and Katie, the the two girls, like, you know, the two main girls, like, from when they were kids, and they watch it, and then they find this the shitty sex tape from the third one that I was telling you oh, about. Oh, yeah. And then the brothers are just like, yeah, they smoke weed <laughs> and drink beer, and they're going to watch porn together. And I'm like, is that does not feel like a thing that brothers, or any people who are related to each other should ever fucking do. It's a bit weird. I I would personally not watch pornography. No, the with thing my is, if, if it was like really stupid pornography, like Freddy dildo hands or whatever it is, or like Edward <laughs> penis hands, like you you, you sit there and go, okay, because I mean we've watched we've all watched porn together, but it was really stupid porn. You mean like the one with the woman, <laughs> the who tickle had... monster, who who oh, like would, shit, yeah, yeah, you remember that because we watched it with Ash and Sarah as well, and it was just this this creepy guy who had bad makeup on. Who would tickle people and still they, until they started bleeding and died? I was thinking of that weird porno where the, the lady had, wasn't it like a vagina in her throat? And so oh, it came that out. One too. And it, so oh. it, it came <laughs> the out the back, back of her head. So the dick came out the back of her head. And this was filmed. No, was it not the other way around? Was it in her throat and then the dick came out of the mouth? <gasps> it was because he was oh. just like fucking a mannequin head going, This is yeah. so fucked up. Oh, yeah. And it was like, That's obviously a pound shop wig and a polystyrene like wig head. <laughs> yeah, because like, because it, it was filmed as a porno. Like it was 100% like. A porn, yeah. Like it was, you know. They oh did god! Every, and then when like they show like the vagina on the back of the head, they literally just put a pound shop wig over some woman's crotch. Oh yeah! <laughs> and it was just like fucking sure. It Why was not? not well made. No, no. but the thing great is, great concept. Like, yeah, no, very I, interesting was it? concept. <laughs> was it now? <laughs> interesting concept. <laughs> Don't kink shame from that. But anyway, like I can understand watching like stupid porn or the mighty muffin pounder rangers or something. But it was just it was just two people. Awkwardly Excellent. fucking, and it's like this. It's not even something you can really make fun of. It had really felt oh, honestly. Re- it was I, really kind of like wow. Finding like, okay. a, finding a random couple sex tape would feel so intrusive to actually. Yeah, watch I'd feel like me. such a scumbag. But they're just like, huh, 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 let's watch porn together. It's not weird. And then they notice, like, because in the actual um, recording, you know, the kids start screaming and they look because there's a, an earthquake and it run, they run off and the camera falls down and a bunch of dust comes down from the ceiling and, like, kind of settles on a mysterious figure for a few seconds. Mm. And then they just kind of, like, zoom in on that and they're like, ah. Oh. And then they, like, it turns out that Katie and Christy were actually, like, after the third one where their parents were fucking killed and the grandma was like, let's go make you marry the devil or whatever there was a creepy fucking guy who was like, yes, Toby's been a friend of mine for a long time and you're going to marry him. And then they film all of the weird cult shit that they do. 
and Katie's like floating back and forth. It looks really silly. Okay, and I'm just. Gonna, I don't want. I don't want to give like advice to weird cultists, but I don't think many weird cultists listen to the podcast, so it's probably safe. But if you do, probably don't film it. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, and it's so funny as well because like they had to bring a guy in to tell all the witches what to do. Well, of course. And I was like, okay, that's. I don't feel that that was intentional. But that's that's not a good look. It it's makes, like all this big, uh, it big group of very... women doing evil shit. They have to have a guy at the top. It's like, mm. It makes for a, an interest. There are interesting readings you could make of that decision. Oh, thoroughly, yeah. Um, but yeah, and like as like it's an interesting idea, but the movie is so bad that it just it doesn't work. So Katie's like, oh, I see two brothers. And they're watching me on a television, and it's like she's literally describing what's happening mm. as it's happening. And it's basically uh, the episode blink of uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, basically, um. uh, I'm saying that this um, that Katie is a, she's she's a fucking Gallifreyan. Yeah, that makes she's sense. She's a Time Lord, yeah. um, which honestly I would prefer that. Is reading. the term timey wimey used? No, but every time I hear it, I kind of want to kick someone's fucking dick in. What timey wimey? Yeah. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Okay, you are just. I am fucking check marking this. There's a tally. You don't. <laughs> I'm, want me I'm to only f- allowed to get away with saying wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Okay, so many you know times. what? That's fucking it. Okay, that is fucking it. <laughs> that was too many. What about if, if okay, I only you, say a bit? You don't want to continue this because my alias is Wib, so I can't help but say a bit of it quite often. Okay, just Wib on its own is fine. Okay, what about Wibbly? No. You're not allowed that. No. Okay, I'm just finding where the line is. I'm just oh, finding where the line is. Oh, you're fine where the fucking line is. Can you say wob? Because then if you say wib and I say blee, and you say wob and I say blee. Oh my God, is this what it's like to be around me? Yes. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Hell is other people... You're trying, to, you're trying to talk about something and then we're going careening off into a <laughs> utter bit of absurdity and unimportant minutia. Yes, this is exactly what it's like. Well, why does everyone find me so charming then? Because they're not here, sitting yeah, here with it happening to Oh, them. is it like, oh, your children are so nice? Yeah, because you can leave at the end of the day. <laughs> That's what the misanthropod is. You go there as a visit to see what your life could <laughs> be like a... if you made worse decisions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm talking about all of us here. None of us are without guilt. Drummer Matt owns a house, has a lovely family, has does a good job, is a functional member of society. Yeah, but he also does his podcast, so he's obviously not completely normal. Penance. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is community service. Thing. Basically, yeah. I think, well, it's like, I'm such a fucking loser that anyone who hangs out with me gets a fucking tax break. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah, that one's no. I just I just want to give you a hug now. <laughs> I'm such a miserable you, you human being to be around that Drama Matt ran a fucking five k to raise awareness. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, um, it ends and it's like there's a hole in the wall because the little girl just gets in the middle of the night. Because I don't care about spoiling this movie because it's fucking terrible. And if you watch it, then you deserve. <laughs> if you watch it, then that's on you. That's on you. That like you make your own fucking choices. And like she draws all these fucking symbols on a wall. Which is just someone has googled spooky looking symbols and then just drawn them all. On a Are wall. any of them like? Do any of them belong to a completely benign real world religion? Well, there's just one that's like. It's not like Fenella the Witch from <laughs> Charlton and the Wheelies, who has a book of like evil spells and it's got a six pointed star on it because someone on the production staff didn't realize that's just a Jewish symbol. This is a star. <laughs> they, thought, they thought it was a pentagram because they obviously didn't know what the pent part I saw pentagram someone meant. give themselves a um a scratch a tattoo. Now if you don't know what a scratch a tattoo it is a tattoo that is done by someone who is not trained, does not have access to autoclaves or sanitation tools and is not and has basically bought a tattoo machine which they will almost certainly refer to as a tattoo gun off eBay and it's just tattooing people willy fucking nilly never get a tattoo like this you don't want to see what happens when you get an infected tattoo they had scratch a tattooed on their thigh a star of david with hail satan <laughs> and they thought it was like an inverted pentagram and oh. it's like oh honey you oh no idiot fucking child oh no because yeah i can't believe i got away with a reference to charlton on the wheelies and no one pulled me up on it no one wants to no one cares <laughs> good like Charlton on the Wheelies sounds like a fever dream, and I don't want to be a part of that world. It's an old stop motion kids show. I hate it. You probably would actually. <laughs> yeah, probably. It'd, it'd probably drive you nuts watching it. Yeah, probably. There's no boobs or anything. There is no. It, it is a a child show <laughs> that, from like the fucking seventies um, or something. I don't know. It's from the seventies. There might be some good vintage Bush in there. 
You so think, paranormal activity. I don't activity, think you understand what dimension. old media was like. Yeah, it was all pornography. It was not. You, no. <laughs> so you say that's I, what they want you I, to I say. I watched quite a lot of like old media from like the sixties and seventies. A lot of pornography. And and a shocking few of, of it is pure is pornography. Well, I mean that feels like that's on you that you're going out of your way to watch the minority of media that was not pornography. No. So like it, and then there's like she draws symbols on the wall, and the camera films her like walking into this big hole where Toby takes her for some fucking reason. In the hole. Yeah, and it's just like it's a hole where he keeps all of his other Pokemon children, and it's just fucking terrible. And like, you know, the molded from Resident Evil Seven, the big black spooky things. I do not. Like the big the big black kind of like um squelchy monsters. I don't think I got that far enough into it. Well they're they're big they you know like Venom from the movie. Venom. I am aware of Venom from the hit hit movie Venom. You know how it's kind of like squelch like squelchy and it's like little and it's kind of like it can, it's quite malleable and turns into shapes and stuff. It, it's gak, yes. It's gak, yeah. Um so basically Toby turns into that and just like it looks like an alien fucking like tail. Oh. piercing his fucking ch- the, the dad's chest and just kills him and it's like oh so so he can just form like like solid metal shapes like knives and fucking stabbing weapons now okay yeah that, he was sent from the future yeah to like I don't know ruin ghost movies for everyone <laughs> But yeah, and it's just like, it establishes so many, like, well, no, it just, it breaks so many kind of established facts about the demon and like just goes, no, let's just make it a fart cloud that can turn solid and just fucking punch holes in people. And it's like, yeah, like, because before it's like, yeah, they can scratch and it can bite and stuff, but like, it tends to like throw shit at people or throw them down the stairs or drag them. It doesn't just fucking harpoon them and leave them like bleeding out. And it's like, it was just like it, a lot of idiot plot. And it's just a bit, oh, it was badly acted as well. Apart from the little girl, she was pretty good. It wasn't very good. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I also played Halo 2 with Long Fang, but I was too busy getting like, you know, murdered horribly by explosive like grunts and stuff so because i'm not very good at the game but yeah that's all i've been doing okay <laughs> okay so i guess that means that we are on to the questions uh do, do we have questions matthew oh, do uh, people want to know things a few people want to know a few things yes okay okay good uh what is the email address that the, the emails should be sent to snipe <laughs> <laughs> the drummer matt at gmail.com what is the email address, Matt? Again, the drummer Matt at gmail dot com. And snipe one more time. What? <laughs> What's the email address? One more time. I don't know. I don't know. One more time. Completely ruined it. Yeah, I completely know. ruined yeah, it. Yeah, I did because fuck yeah. you. You'd... The drummer Matt at gmail dot com. Okay. What is the first question there, Mister Matthew? So, Grox. Hi, Grox. Feel like I need to. Right. Recently, the founder and chief, chief executive inquisitor of Grox Inc., oh. the custom surprise box company, Inquisitor Grox, me, published a <laughs> picture of himself on the Twitterverse. It was rated by two of the entities that are part of the Misanthropod as <laughs> dang. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Can confirm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Can um, confirm dang. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't know how to react at the time, so they just want to say thanks. <laughs> it is okay. Grox is... Uh, Grox, you are gorgeous inside and out, friend. Very good looking individual. Yeah, the entirety um, of our stream chat agrees. <laughs> Following on, you might you might want to take that back in a second. Following on, um, even though the founder and chief executive Inquis- inquisitor of Grox Inc., the custom surprise box company, is very fond of all members of the Misanthropod, he has filed a complaint regarding the woman TM. Oh no! Oh, no. oh I'd hate to be her right now. <laughs> that's a joke. Not seem... uh, by the way, that's a joke from our streams. Um... <laughs> the amount of times like some rando person will come in and go, "Oh, <laughs> a woman," and it's like, "Yes, thanks, yes. hi." We <laughs> fucking exist, you insult prick. So, so it's kind of like an in joke where yeah, people yeah. refer to me as the woman. Tm. I mean, like, as a joke. Y- yeah, I, 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 
I wasn't assuming that this was serious in any possible way. Oh, no, way. no, just in case like, people <laughs> didn't know. But yeah, okay. it's, just, it's just a joke. So, a complaint regarding The Woman, TM, mm-hmm. who does not seem to watch other horror movies apart from those with ghosts and occult content. Okay, the aforementioned so... founder and chief executive inquisitor of Glocks Inc., the custom surprise box company, demands The Woman, TM, to watch <laughs> horror films with sharks and, and or other animals and to hear The Woman, TM's, opinion on them. Okay. You should watch the, the... I think there's three Deep Blue there's Sea movies. Meg. No, I want to watch The Meg, which is on Amazon Prime, because it's The Megalodon, but yeah. it's just The Meg, and I think that's really funny. Then watch The Meg. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. But I get... Well, if, if Grox Box Incorporated, the, the box company, um, is, has formed like several complaints against me, I guess i got to fucking do something about it. <laughs> Oh, what a werewolf flick. I have loads there of shit. There is no... Go- we have been through this on many occasions. There's, the problem with werewolf movies is, is there's, there's one like, good one. There's been like three... Oh, no, Ginger Snaps is... Okay, the first one is okay. And then there's like and American there's like, Werewolf in London. Which is really, which really is good. good. Yeah. And the, then werewolves, the werewolves in What We Do in the Shadows are great. Yeah, they're amazing, but it's not really a sole <laughs> werewolf movie. But, so no, but they, you... are, they are doing a spin-off with them, apparently, mm. maybe. I know, I can't... Oh, but I once you know, get I... past the initial, like, well-known werewolf movies, basically all of them are terrible. Yeah, it sucks. Because mm. I do have a few that I haven't But then that hasn't watched. stopped you watching any of these other things. Yeah, exactly. True, true. So I'll watch, like, Monster Wolf or something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we have one that's, like, about monstrous rabbits? Like no, beast, we gave that to your dad. Beaster Bunny. Isn't that what it's, it's yeah, it's like the Beaster Bunny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also watched, I, I've literally given it away to Charity Shop, but, which I feel kind of bad about because, you know. It's, Someone else is probably going to have yeah, to see it now. It's called War Wolves, <laughs> and it's like three women in the military who dress in incredibly tight fatigues who are werewolves, and I honestly can't they remember dress, much more than that. Uh, don't shit. they dress like they're from the Call of Duty porn parody? Cock of Duty, yeah. yeah. They dress like they're from Cock, Cock of Duty, Cock, and it's like. Cock of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, there's a porno called Cock of Duty. There's there's like a Safe for Work um, trailer on YouTube. <laughs> it's filmed in the same place that Tom Scar filmed one of his videos. Sniper Pug. So, oh, yeah. Nice. It's pretty funny. Be a Cock of Duty. Yeah, great, great name. You couldn't have called it like Call of Booty. Ooh, that's, that's, that's there's probably another one good. called that. That's there probably is why. probably that exists, yeah. Mm. All right. S- still. N- next up, Henry. Hello. Um,. I hope Snipe is feeling better after having to cancel the stream the other day. Oh, First thank up. you. I'm feeling a little better. Yeah, well, that's good. So I'm, I'm still having some issues, but hell, we all are, so. <laughs> but thank you for, for inquiring. Um, okay, first question. How will the outtakes of patrons be in the future? So, Wib, apparently you've mentioned on Twitter that there are loads to be bundled. Uh, yeah, basically. Um... I, I fuck up a lot, and they're very <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> worth $1 a month. <laughs> Uh, we we used to uh, put up outtakes after every uh, scripted video, but um, for the last like it, it's it's gone on for like a year. We've just not been able to get them, get them together. And I, what I've been meaning to do is to put them all together into one big monster video. Yeah, uh, to monster put up for outtakes. this will be entirely for patrons. Um, mm. But I've just not got around to it because it's like there's been a lot of times where it's come down to well, I can either get that put together or I can be working on like the actual video the actual video yeah because we found ourselves like perpetually running behind schedule for the entirety of this year so yeah but basically there's a shitload of them um so yeah that that'll happen at some point um but well it might actually come together because the next video is going to start like proper production relatively soon um, so um, what I'm going to try and do is get them all out after that. So, yeah, the outtakes will, will appear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second question, more directed at you, Snipe. <coughs> so, Snipe, you had to respond to a tweet about Lord George. This was one of Henry's friends, and he can only now apologise as there's now a Twitter account in the name Lord George. There is, yes. isn't you. He is, will, he's interacting Will with Snipe me. Endorse, endorse the use of her trademark on Twitter. Yes. Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I trust you, Henry. I know you won't say something really mean. Well, get out and follow Lord George then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> at Lord George. Because that, that was a weird thing to wake up to. <laughs> like Lord George being like, hey. And I'm like, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Is it at Lord George? I it's don't know. literally at Lord George. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. good. Um, 
Many thanks from Henry. Um, next up, James. Hello. My question is, Snipe. Yeah. You, you talk a lot about our beautiful and harrowingly cold nation of Canada. Oh, Canada. I love Canada. Have you visited Canada before? And if not, would you like any tourist recommendations? I have never visited Canada. I've always really, really wanted to. And I want to go to Ontario because I like the accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go to Toronto uh, because I think Oculus lives there. And I want to just go and hang out with him and watch Sailor Moon. Like all of it. Fair, including fair. PGSM. Oculus, I'm fucking holding you to this. You don't even have a say. We are <laughs> we are doing this. Um, but yeah, and yeah, tourist recommendations, sure. I mean, it's unlikely I'll ever be able to go because, oh my god, uh, it's yeah. it's like a grand for one like for like one person to go, and it's like that's a lot of money. <laughs> but one day it'd be really nice too. Because you've been, Matt, haven't you? I have. I've been to Toronto and. We had a few days there, and then we went up and stayed up in the lakes north of Toronto somewhere. And I honestly, it was, you know, for a British person, it was a hella long drive. For a Canadian, it was like them going to their back garden, I think. <laughs> what was yeah. it like? If, was it like three or four hours? I can't, I can't even remember. It was most of the day to get there. It, yeah, as an Australian, that's not that long. Like, no, it's not, <laughs> I don't think. But to us, it was. Mm. And then we also had a three or four days over in um, Montreal as well. Yeah, uh, Montreal. I would like to go to Montreal as well. Which was fun. Yeah, it was also, good. I, I would love to go back and go to, like, more bits of it, because obviously it's a massive country with way more bits than just these two cities. Mm. So. Also, um, there's... Oh, I can't remember his actual name. Fuck. It's like Trevor something. He's a, he stand up, he's a Canadian stand-up comedian. Big beard. Plays Squirrely Dan and Letterkenny. And now everyone knows why I want to go to Canada. <laughs> um, and, like, he... Like, one of his bits was, like, because he's in Quebec and he's like, I love Quebec. It's my favorite. It's my favorite place to be condescended to in French. <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to go there and speak my like half hearted French French at them and then just get laughed at. And I think it'd be quite funny. I'm just going to go there and speak German to them until they throw acid at me and I have to leave. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that's more insulting to. Like, Well, me, really. I don't know. You're suggesting that the people in Quebec are like, ready to throw acid canadians right in our quebecois like ready to just fucking disfigure you if you don't speak french because from what i've heard yes <laughs> i don't know i don't know if that's a line that i'm willing to endorse as part of the misanthropod it's not racist the acid white. <laughs> <laughs> the acid hurling french canadians hello like, this is... podcast title <laughs> Snipe gets her face burnt off by acid-wielding French Canadians. I mean, now if I ever visit, that absolutely will happen. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'm all right with that. I feel like we should move on from whatever point was being trying to be made. I yeah. can't even fucking remember. Sure, yeah. Okay. I just want some fully dressed fucking chips so badly. That's all fully I want. What? Fully dressed chips. Um. Just move on. You don't want to open okay. up that can of worms, honey. Uh, very, very last email. Lars. Hello, Lars. So, first off, they, they accused me of forgetting to mention Chicken Police in the last podcast. I thought I did, but I'm not going to dwell on it because I feel like that gives the people who write in too much power. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> I'm going to move on. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I think you did because I remember laughing a lot because it's like an in-joke with Wib and I, so. Okay, maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to accuse them of being wrong on the internet, mm. but... I think um, it, it might have been a bit that got <laughs> cut for, like, time yeah. pacing. <laughs> anyway... So they also have to say um, they they too are kind of worried about the upcoming Warhammer TV shows, both the real and animated ones. Mm. They don't think they're going to be able to properly convey the whole concept of none of these are the good side. Yeah. Because you know it's it's yeah, mm. G-Dubs is not the best at doing that recently. And a lot of things the, aren't. So yeah, yeah I don't not, know how they're going to go with that. With them, and plus you know the way it's kind of the way kind of people see it, it's like oh this this is the seemingly the main protagonist which means they're the good guys it's like no protagonist does not equal good guy yeah i mean when it comes to stuff like that like i think until we see the thing then i i feel I, yeah, it's... you can have reservations sure but yeah like, we, we don't know until and, and i mean i'm hoping 
that they'll manage to do it. But I mean, who knows? Yeah, like I hope. I, I remain I, hopeful. I hope they pull it off because you know it would be it would be nice to see them uh, them do it well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, until definitely. until we see it, like I'm I, I'm sort of just kind of intrigued to see how it comes out. But but yeah, it, I think it is a, a reservation to be a little bit concerned about. Um, you know, a, 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 a franchise that has a, a wee bit of a habit of accidentally glorifying totalitarianism as <laughs> the tides of fascism are lapping at Western democracies uh, is something that is a bit upsetting and a bit of something that we should probably be able to pay a little bit more attention to. But here's hoping so, there's hot people in it. There we go. I thought yeah. I'd bring up levity. Yeah, yeah. so uh, hopefully, that, hopefully they don't fall into that trap. But we don't know, so I, I yeah, whatever. Yeah. And uh, Lars's last thoughts were just about Lower Decks. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. But they basically agree with most of what we said. So, yeah, the first few episodes aren't necessarily the best and some of the jokes don't quite stick the landing or or something, but they think they, they think it gets better as it goes through. Um, and they also mentioned, similar to what I did, about the title sequence being way more like <laughs> old Trek and things and, and also it being problem in the wiki stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, they, yeah they, they agree with basically everything we said earlier, so I don't know how to respond to this. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that yes. is You're that is. Right. Li- We're amazing. <laughs> we 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 had this uh, near identical uh, thoughts ourselves. So yes, we agree. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I will say, I, I do hope that, um, like, it is something that I, I am sort of intrigued to see, like how they go. Uh, are they going to like really stick with the whole, um, pl- like thing of like problem of the week kind of format or are they going to try and tell more grand stories because most mm. things do that nowadays yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um but if honestly if it means that there's still this little thing off in the corner that's star trek but is still doing the planet of the week stuff then i like i'm kind of just happy that that's happening um i didn't realize how much i missed it actually like mm. i do hope because obviously there's like uh, i think at last count there are 65 new Star Trek shows in production at this very moment. It, I'm honestly not sure if that's an exaggeration or not. Um, it is an <laughs> exaggeration, but not by as much as you'd think. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of shows that are currently... I mean, I think there's probably about five shows or something like that that are, okay, in, but, that are yeah. like at various stages of like, oh, are we going to make that? Or, or is actually in production, whether it be uh, Discovery Picard, there's obviously Lower Decks is going on, we've got... Um, the spin-off for Pike. Um, hell, I think there was talk about doing a spin-off for Seven of Nine as well. And there's a couple of other ones that I, I forget about, like ones that are, aren't connected but are like of a different thing entirely. And they, they keep doing them. And I hope one of them does kind of settle more on the weekly format. Because I, I think that as much as I have enjoyed Picard and um, especially Season 2 of Discovery, uh, once it got past the kind of weaknesses that Season 1 had, um, I I do miss just oh this is just a self contained episode like it might have some things that inform later episodes like a character might show up who shows up later or it might be a facet of a wider story like they'd often do with the Dominion War in Deep Space Nine but I do miss just being able to go okay here's just one episode that I can just watch and it's just a self contained thing uh, because you can just sit down and just watch like uh, there's most like nearly every episode of um tng apart from the two parters you can watch with zero like context like of mm. what, what's happened like sometimes there'll be it'll be like a pseudo sequel to a previous episode but you can usually work out what's going off even if you can't remember like they're pretty good with that stuff and i i kind of miss that and I, I do hope that at least one of the shows goes back to that format even though it's something that's gone out of favor with tv in general these days so, yeah, that's mm. that's some thoughts what I had about Star Trek. Those are some good big brain <laughs> thoughts. Thank and you. I mean, I know that like I literally started an entire other podcast so I could talk about sci-fi, but I'm going to do it here too. So, <laughs> see, that's Longfang that's... coming to fucking arrest you. He's in the, the, the he's the... in the Iron Broomobile. Yes, which has a police. <laughs> oh, it has an ambulance siren for some it does, reason. Yeah. Because you're going to fucking need one. Because I'm going to fucking need one for talking about sci-fi, not in the podcast about sci-fi. That yeah. explicitly started so I could not have to talk about sci-fi quite as often <laughs> in this in this podcast. That's the yeah. other thing I've been doing, actually, since then. I've been listening to your, your Men With Funny Heads. 
Oh, thank you. Give a scathing review. Pardon? Give a scathing review. A scathing review? Um, I think it needs more nudity. Mm. I can tell that you two aren't naked (laughs) because you sound too encumbered with clothing. (laughs) I am usually not wearing a shirt because it's been fucking hot. I know you're currently Mm. not wearing a shirt, which is too hot for you two. Oof. (laughs) Oof. Yeah, just... I can see your titters! Just shorts and pants. That's that's my podcasting gear. <laughs> yep. It's very Drama upsetting, Matt. everybody. Good. Drama Matt, Good. can you describe what you're wearing? I'm I'm also wearing shorts, but I'm also I'm wearing I am wearing a t shirt, unfortunately. Is it and t-shirt socks or... as well? Long socks with shorts. It's a good combo. Yeah, it's good. I Sexy saw it. a guy jogging earlier, and because it was really warm, it made me cringe to think about jog. He had like a he had like a gray sweatshirt on, trousers and knee high socks, and I was like. Dude, you must be fucking sweltering. Please, you're gonna overheat and die. And it just made me feel really, really uncomfortable, like and unhot just watching him. So I was like, oh Christ. It's like, you know, when you see people in the gym, like like powering on a treadmill on a really I I literally saw, you know those really big puffer jackets that were really popular with like twats, like when we <laughs> yeah. were kids. Yeah. There was literally a dude wearing one of those on a oh. fucking treadmill, and I'm like um, he is trying to sweat the sin out of his body, I believe. The thing is, he was already really skinny. I mean, maybe he was like my size when I got in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. But yeah, and it's like, shit, you know, maybe I should give that a go. Yeah. But yeah, no, this, th- those people should be fucking feared. Same same people who like go jogging at like 5 a.m. in the morning. Fucking Jesus Christ, do, ne- do not get in there. I am not ready for anything at 5 in the morning. I have gone for runs at 5 in the morning. And you know what? Oh, yeah. Seeing other people be out there and that steely gaze that just screams, I could fucking kill you with my thoughts. I Honestly, I'm scared to go running again at 5am. Are you 5 saying the people who are running at 5am are too powerful for you to you to even be in the same area as? Yeah, because I honestly feel their eye beams could probably just explode me. That's possible. Because they're um... that powerful. <laughs> I think Scarlet, like, I think she runs in the mornings. I mean, she's, she's like murderously powerful anyway. So if she does run in the mornings, like seriously... Fuck. Uh, where are you up to uh, with with the men with funny heads? By the way, me. Yeah, I have listened to at least three per odd uh, podcasts. This is riveting <laughs> content for order. everyone, by the way. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, fantastic. no. I was, I was men just wondering. with funny heads. Do, 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 do. My next episode is talking about Dalek, so that means oh, okay. I've listened to one, two, three, four, five. Okay, right. Okay. Was, um, was that a test? Have I passed? No, yes. I was just that was just me being cu- I was just me being curious. <laughs> also, I just no, no, want to say I like it. because I know Longfang can't like actively strangle me like right now. Mm-hmm. The amount of messages I get going, God, Longfang's voice is nice. Oh yeah, right. Longfang right. has the best voice. Oh, Longfang has the best voice. He's just like he's got that kind of like really deep kind of timber, and I know he's like mm. he's literally he'll be texting me now, going like going snipe shot the <laughs> fuck up, even though it'll be like three detect, days from now. I can detect you're complimenting me, and I'm not happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> and like I remember talking to Ruth about, it and she was like, "Yeah, he's got such a nice voice. It's like it's mm. it, it's got that kind of like gruff softness, and but it's also quite calming. But you know that if he got angry, it would be the most terrifying thing in the world." Seriously, I one of the podcasts I don't, I don't think it was the last one. I think it was the the one before that. On that day, I got three separate messages of people telling me how much they like his voice. Yeah, <laughs> and you are kind of cutting it short so it's not weird because I saw <laughs> I, I saw those messages. <laughs> I mean, on the converse side, he is a disgrace to Scotland, so, I mean... Yeah, apparently, he's yeah. like, some, some Twitter <laughs> fuckwit called him, like, a disgrace to Scotland, because, um... Reasons. Because yeah. I think he said something like, hey, women are people, or, I don't know, something really Who knows? political. Something political on the internet, yeah. 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 Anywho, Men With Funny Heads is a good podcast, go it's, listen to that now. Yeah, and why, you think... In fact, why are you listening to this yeah, podcast? Listen go listen to, to a better podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sound like an Australian who's been stuck in a wind tunnel and has un- and learned how to fucking talk by watching like Priscilla Queen of the Desert over and over again. I and Drama Matt sounds like a normal human being. <laughs> and Whip also sounds like a normal human being, but he's kind of like a normal human being that was trapped in a building who was only allowed to watch Black Adder. <laughs> and like Longfang sounds like he sounds like the Highlands on a misty day. I mean, both of you are, are welcome to come on the podcast. Um, like, I mean, we're gonna. 
What is this, a crossover episode? Ah! Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I to... invitation I, I, rescinded. I, if I ever come on, I will definitely make that joke, so no apologies in advance. <laughs> If I go on, I'll make that joke. Yeah, too. we should probably like wrap up this because we're just talking now. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're just ha- we're just hanging yeah. out. This is just having yeah. natter. Like, I hope you enjoy yeah. this. This is this is like what <laughs> was actually just talking. Mm. Like, so, drama, Matt, how's the fam? So good. Is so toe cake is is toe cake going down well? Does everyone love that oh. squishmallow? Toe cake is amazing. Yeah, I sent he is, drama he's very loved. a squishmallow called toe cake. And then I saw that you got you got the same the same. It's like a lion. Yeah, thing. I got, you got I got the same gifted one. him. I got uh, gifted him. And it is best. it is the same one, yeah. So good. Um but yeah, thanks for listening to us fucking just whatever this is. Um <laughs> we're gonna go now, so don't forget to stay hydrated, you magnificent fucking bitch. We love you. Bye. Wear a mask, cause Over your nose. Wear and wear it over your fucking nose. <laughs> yeah, wear, it's not it. hard to wear it properly. Like, come on. Like, mm-hmm, why mm-hmm. are you even uh yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Bye. 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 Also, don't drink whilst you're wearing a mask. It's very messy. I saw two people trying to make out while wearing a mask. That was fucking hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye.